weapon against me will prosper or stand Cause I got a promise from the Son of Man I'll throw up my armor and raise up my hands Cause I know my God and I know who I am Oh, I know my God and I know who I am Shout out tonight with your praise. Back the devil up and all of his people. You got to talk to those giants and tell them where they got to go. They got to get out of your way. Are we going to do it tonight? Let's sing it together. Say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Tell every giant, get out my way. Hey, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Tell every giant, get out my way. Sing it out, come on. Hey, tell everyone. Get up. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Tell every giant. Get out my way. Bigger the bigger the battle. Greater my faith. There is no giant. You cannot slay, cause you're stronger.
So where are this? Where is your sting? tonight, everything that he has, everything that I have, everything I've accomplished, every place that I've been, it's all for his glory. We'll never take the credit. We know that without him, we are nothing, but with him, we have everything we need. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We're going to speed up a little bit. Y'all ready? I was burned. You sing it for me, come on. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tool. Hey! Till I met. I was grieving, but God, oh, God. All my failures I tried. Free people in the room today. 
Jesus when I may.
old eyes were free. So we're gonna say, get up now and praise. Get up, get up, get up, get up now and praise. Get up, get up, get up, get up now and come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up now and praise. Get up, get up, get up. Sing out, let's go. Get up, get up, get up, get up now and praise. says that the Lord inhabits our praise. He gets in it so our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Your turn. Go ahead and say it. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise become your house, your place. Raise it up and sing it. Come on. Our praise become your house, your place. Our praise become your house, your place. Our praise, our praise become. Your house, your place, oh God, oh yeah. We can say, we sing a song. We sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise and you come in. We sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise. Come on, let's sing. 
but it also confuses the enemy. <laughs> and that should make you excited because, you know, he'll try everything he can to make you feel like your back is against the wall. But when you really understand the weapon called praise, all you have to do is begin to laugh and give God praise in the middle of your circumstance, in the middle of what you're going through, in the middle of what you're experiencing, and your praise will confuse the enemy and it will cause God to move his angels on your behalf. So tonight, I challenge you to open up your mouth, to raise your hands, to use your body, to sing from your heart, to sing from your spirit, to bless the name of the Lord. Because all oh, in this moment tonight, God's going to do some amazing things. Hallelujah. Let's continue to praise him.
sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise. Let praise arise. Oh, we'll see you. We'll see you break down every wall. You watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when we break. You got a great. The song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith rise. Let it rise. Come on. You see the break down every wall. You watch the giants fall. You cannot survive. what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we pray let's say this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we pray lift it up say this is what living this is what this is what heaven we pray
worship his name tonight. Oh, come on, lift your voice up. Don't be afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We praise you. We praise you. We worship. We worship. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We praise you. tonight are you all right we're gonna raise it up I'm gonna need your help and so I'm just gonna expect you to help me I know you're gonna do it right let's do it excuse me for a minute but I have had a song to sing it might not be on key but it's from my heart no one else can tell it what the Lord has done for me. This might take all day, so I better start right now. Said it might get. Oh, you gotta say it. It might get. Hey, heaven is coming. So it might get loud. You gotta sing it out tonight. It might get. Have a halo. No, I'm not a perfect man, but I'm just glad to be a child of God. When I think of where I could have been, should have been, would have been, if he hadn't stepped in. Oh, I got a praise on the inside that can't be denied, and I got it.
praise and wild praises. You don't, and you don't care what nobody else think about your praise. It doesn't matter if you're too loud in the hallway. You want somebody to know that your God is good. You want somebody to know that your God, your God is good. And he deserves all praise. He deserves all worship. He deserves all you have in this room tonight. Oh, I dare you to open up your mouth. I dare you to give him all you got tonight. a whole lot more to give tonight because I feel like screaming, but I just can't scream. Praise God. We're going to continue to worship together. Hallelujah. Are you praying for me? Let's continue to worship together. I'll search the world but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise, treasures the faith, never enough. Do you know it? Go ahead, sing. You came along. Put me back together. Put me back. Every desire. Every desire. Is now satisfied. Here we go. Oh, oh, there's nothing better, better than you. There's better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. This I know is true. Sing, I'm not afraid. To show you, to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you sing them all, and you still call me. Oh, 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 because of God. He's the God of the valley. He's the God.
Yeah, sing that out. Fail. He will never. I trust in, I trust in. Woo! My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I know the honor of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story. This is my song. Praise is my reason, King and Savior all the day long. Let's sing it out together. I trust. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust, I trust in God, my Savior, my Savior. Thank him that he never fails. Thank him that he always comes through in your life. Thank you that he always keeps his promises. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you so much. Ooh. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I... Let's sing that. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why... Lift it up, say. I saw the Lord.
Sing it out. Who will never, who will never fail? He will never fail. I trust in God. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior. Who Never fail. He will never fail. <laughs> One more time. I trust. I trust in God. My Savior. He will never fail. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. Praise is yours forever. Are you ready? Say, come on. 
we put our trust. We put our trust in your name, Jesus. Sing, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. You are here with us. We put our hope. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Say, blessings and honor. Glory and power. Forever.
but you know it costs us a little bit of something. What does it require? That we praise, that we worship, and we walk in expectation of what he's going to do tonight. So anybody that's in expectation, I want to see your hands going up. I want to see your hands going up. I want to see your hands going up.
Lord, come on, bless his name tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so great. You know what? Can we just do how great? Just let's just sing it. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Oh, yeah. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me how is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Oh, you're so great. You're so great. One more time. Say, how great. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And oh, Yes! 
He's so worthy. He's so worthy. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. If you know it, just sing it. Yes, you will. Yes, you came expecting to receive from the Lord tonight? Good. Pastor Greg Morrow, come up so everybody can see you. This is Morris Cirillo's right-hand man, who's a new friend I made. You don't have to use the stairs, just step right up. Come right up. A friend, new friend I made in May, and he invited me to come down to San Diego tomorrow, and I never felt a release to go. And then my uncle passed away. I'm doing his funeral tomorrow in Pittsburgh. Wow. So 
I hate typing pe- that because you just sound like a nutcase. I don't feel a release to go. But I, I just never felt to go, and that's why. So I didn't want you to think there was weirdness between us. Thanks for coming up from San Diego. No, no, I'm going to have you pray and open the service and bless all the pastors. How many pastors and full-time ministers do we have here? Let me see your hands up high. Give all the pastors a big hand clap that are here. Morris Sorello is one of the greatest crusade evangelists that ever walked the earth. And his legacy center is down in San Diego, and this was his right-hand man. So I'm going to give you the privilege of having him pray a blessing over you. And I love you. Thank Come on, you. I love you too. Come on, let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise tonight. Why don't we lift our hands in his presence? Lord, we thank you that you are good today and that your mercy endures forever. Lord, we thank you that anointings never leave the earth, but, Lord, they only intensify. And, Lord, tonight, God, we are going to tap in, Lord, to the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And, Father, we thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. Lord, we thank you for miracles, signs, wonders. Lord, I declare tonight, I sense tonight, Lord, that we are standing, O oh God, under an open heaven. And we just say, God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, anoint your servant tonight, O oh God, on this seventh night here in Los Angeles. Lord, let this be the night that the walls come down, O oh God. Lord, that miracles, signs, and wonders, God, are manifest in the name that is above every name. Somebody go ahead and give him who alone is worthy a mighty hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I love you so much. You didn't have to do that. Well, you may be comfortably seated. I want to preach something that I've never preached before for a whole sermon, for a whole message. And I believe tonight's going to be a night that marks your life forever. I've had a day that I'll never forget as long as I live, April 19th, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, if you haven't heard, I made the announcement a couple days ago that I'm going to come back to Los Angeles one, once a quarter. So the next one, if they have the graphic, uh, not just for you, I would also like to see it to know when I'm coming back. Aug- Friday, August 30th, so that'll be summer. So we did January winter. Uh, now spring, August 30th on Friday, because I've learned it's not the easiest to get places during the week uh, if you live here, because most of you have to work seven to nine jobs, and then if you're 14 or 15, you have to work two to three jobs uh, just to pay the taxes. So we'll do summer, Friday, August 30th, and then sa- Saturday, November 23rd, that'll be our autumn meeting, and that'll be four times this year, and then we'll uh, see what the Lord has after that. But I, I just, uh, like I was saying, so you don't know I'm not blowing smoke, I felt whatever I felt in January that made me feel to come back now, I felt it two or three times as strong here, that people are very hungry for God, and uh, the pastors are hungry for God and the people, and I want, I want to use my life to bless the Lord. And then if you're watching online, I'm also going to do Arizona, because if you, I was looking on a map, it's only about that far away, so I'll just hit it both at the same time when we go out that week. So um, location to be determined, but we'll have it, and it'll be free parking and everything. If you came Sunday night and uh, had to pay for parking, I apologize. I didn't know about that. It was an oversight, and uh, we fired the person that works for our ministry that did that and deported them back to their country of origin, and that'll never happen again. So your, your parking is comp tonight, and uh, it'll be like that every time. And I love you. I love the people of Los Angeles. Thank you for one of the best weeks I've ever had. California is a great state, full of wonderful people. Can you say amen? Amen. So that's that. And then we have an event, which I'm not going to play the video for, but we have an event called What No Eye Has Seen that we did last year. How many of you either came to that in person or watched it online? So what I did was I felt spur of the moment, and you could tell the Lord did it, because I think in less than 20 days, you know, if you, if you work for our ministry, it's not the easiest job. I told, him, I told him the speakers that I wanted. So we had Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. We had Jesse Duplantis. We had Bishop Dag Haywood Mills that's having the largest evangelistic crusades uh, in the world right now. Then we had Paul Nietzsche, who's a spiritual son 
of Bishop David Oyedepo. At the moment, he has the largest church on planet Earth. It's a 90,000-seater, and it's packed on Sunday. So I wanted these guys, and then my Uncle Ted. So I wanted these guys in to loose what's in their spirit to our church. Those meetings I had high expectations for, and they far surpassed my high expectations. I spent a lot of time on the ground, and uh, they anointed people with oil. We, we filled, that place filled up. It's a 70,000 square foot building, and our church at the time was a year and a half old, and then we had to put 400 people in overflow. The city was actually sending people to count heads uh, to try to shut the meeting down. And there was all kinds of supernatural things happening. And I, I know I've thrown the term supernatural around a lot today. I mean supernatural. Like, we have a couple that goes to our church now because they were up visiting. His, the man was visiting his girlfriend's mother together as a couple up on the hill above our church. And they said, we were looking down at all the cars that were there. And when we did, we both heard a voice say, you need to go down to that and be a part of it. They didn't go to church. And then they came, and he was telling me, he said, you're not going to believe this. I came down for the next service, and when Pastor Kofi prayed, he said, I felt like a power hit me in the chest. These are people that have no background with that or anything. And so the church grew from that. So we're, we're going to do that until Jesus comes back every summer. So June 30th, and it's free, free to attend, parking's free, June 30th to July 7th. Oh, they already have the graphic up, what no I has seen. So Pastor Rodney's not there this time, not because, well, I'll be honest with you. I took him out to Taco Bell, and he told me if I paid for his meal, he'd pay me back, and I'm still waiting for those $17. <laughs> so I told him, you're never coming to my church again until I see those. So we, you won't see Pastor Rodney, but uh, you will see. He's actually in Europe at that time. That's me and Adalis, my Uncle Ted. Paul Nietzsche's coming back. That's Matthew Ashimaloa, who looks very young, and he is very young, uh, moving. But he's in his 70s and still preaching and doing crusades. He actually turned his church over to his son and started to do mass crusades in Africa in his 70s. He pastored the largest church in Western Europe uh, up until he, he left. They had a 12,000-person church. I'm talking 12,000 on Sunday in London. You know, London has churches where the average attendance is like 6 and 11. I'm, be, I'm being honest. And he had a massive church and a great man of God. So he's coming. And then uh, Robert Kayanja is all the way on the left. When he was 19 years old, he came to listen to T.L. Osborne preach. And he was seated like where you're seated. And somebody came and said, you can come sit up on the platform, which was a miracle because he was only 19. And they were having all the big bishops there. So he goes and sits down. T.L. Osborne walks up with his interpreter. And it was a big fight to interpret for T.L. Osborne. I mean, pastors got in, like, physical fights over who got to interpret for him. The main pastor gets to be the interpreter because you're the star. There's 100,000 people there. You get to be on stage. Everybody was fighting for it. So they, the guy that finally gets to be the interpreter, they walk up on stage on night one. And when they walk by Robert Kayanja, T.L. Osborne stopped and said, you're my interpreter. Come with me. And they were irritated, the other pastors. And he had this 19-year-old come. And interpret for him because he felt in his spirit, obviously knew in his spirit who he was going to turn out to be. And uh, had him come up and interpret for him. And at the end of the crusade, he took the big vat of olive oil that he was using to anoint the crowd and dumped the whole rest over his head and prophesied over him. And then he said, I want you to come with me to the next crusade. And he took him with him to several crusades. Well, T.L. Osborne knew what he was doing. That man ended up building a church called Miracle Center in Kampala, Uganda, that's a 10,000-seater. And a couple years ago, if you watch me do 40 days of glory, I got the idea from him. He did 70 days of glory. I have four-sevenths of the faith he has, so I did 40 days of glory. And he did 70 days of glory, and they had in every night 10,000-seat church, and he has his own national television network. It shook the country. And they started to have DJs and athletes that everybody knew in Uganda, top soccer, footballers, soccer players, top uh, uh, um, celebrities, movie stars, come and get saved and give their testimony. And they weren't celebrity testimonies. Like, I've decided to bring my talents to this church and do this church a favor. It was like I was living for the devil. I'm, I'm living in sin. I realize that. And I'm renouncing my sin and giving my life to Jesus Christ. So that blew up. Then they had a wave of miracles go through where they were having stacked a bunch of, of 
uh, braces and wheelchairs and walkers. So then he said he felt led to do 70 days of glory. Imagine being on, on staff at that church. You do 70 straight nights. And then you're, huh. And he went, I feel to do round two. And so he did round two. In round two, I watched it online. They, the thing, they weren't having celebrities get saved as much, or athletes, but imams. Those are like the pastors of mosques. So it's not just Muslims. They're the people that run the mosque. They were coming and giving their testimony and getting saved. And then when they'd finish, they'd take their hat off and their robe and lay it down. So by the end of round two, they had all the wheelchairs and canes and walkers on this side. And then on this side, a pile of a mom clothing on national TV. I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you saw recently when our vice president, Kamala Harris, came over to Uganda and told them that the United States was going to withhold aid if they didn't switch their legislation around because what happened was at the end of all those rounds of 70 days of glory, they wrote legislation and banning in the constitution, banning uh, homosexual marriage. And, and so America came over and said, we're not going to give you any foreign aid if you don't switch that. And the president who got touched in those meetings said, uh, Miss Vice President, you can go back on your plane to America. We don't want what you have over there here. And it flipped the country. Because the way you flip a country is not by protest or political lines. You know, I pray this gets in you. And I'm not trying to get the church not involved in politics by any means. But you know, how many times do you have to get betrayed by the Republican Party before you realize these people don't have the capacity to get it done? You're not fighting a political ideology. You're fighting against wicked spirits in high places. And the way that you beat those spirits is not by standing and making motions like this to pull it down. You beat it by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the demonstration of God's power with signs and wonders. So I'm... The, you know, these are not stories I'm telling you of things that happened 25 years ago. I mean, Robert Kanja did that like, like, like two, three years ago. And then he's still, he's one of the only guys at his age. Usually people have miracle meetings when they're young. Then as they get older, they become teachers or they teach about evangelism. He still, I, I've actually taken his mode of operation as my mode of operation. Because he does his Miracle Center Church Sunday morning, then goes somewhere else in Uganda and in, in the bush and does miracle crusades, like the blind, blind eye night, deaf ear night, crippled limb night, then come back to the church. So I want the people uh, in my church, not just for my church, I want it to be a place where people can come from all over the country. Now think of this. This is a side note, but it's also a good reason to come. You know, people say, I don't know anybody in my church that's my age. I don't have any friends. I want to get married, but there's no, there's no men my age in my church. There's no women my age in my church. Well, when you're at a place where there's 2,000 people that, are, that love God and love the Holy Ghost and love the anointing, you know, not that you're there looking uh, <laughs> like a physical Tinder account, but, but you do. You meet people there. We just had a, a, a young lady that helped us in the ministry for a long time. She's about to turn 40. She had pretty much come to grips with the fact she was never going to get married. Then she came to our church, and in that big gathering, she met a guy uh, at our church who's a great guy, and uh, Adalis just did their wedding. You, when you get around people that matter, you say, boy, you're really trying to get us to come. Yes, I am. So if you're not interested in the anointing, there's single people there. Amen. <laughs> when, you come, when you come there, you're going to find the thing. Boy, this guy's excited. He stood up. Um. You're going to find the devil, especially I'm sure if you live in a place like California, the devil has a way of playing tricks on your mind like, I'm the only one. You hear people say that around California. I'm like the only one that uh, hasn't bowed to Baal or kissed his face. But then when you come to a big meeting with people from all over the country last year, I mean, I announced it like 14 days ahead of time. We had people from United Arab Emirates. We had people from uh, Canada, people from Costa Rica. I, I could name a bunch of countries. People flew in from all over the place to be at that meeting. It was a special time. And I'll tell you, it was special for me because several of those guys, I didn't even get to say goodbye to them. They called me out and prayed for them and anointed me with oil or whatever. And I went out under the power. The one night when I woke up, Adonis was laying next to me on the AstroTurf. And when I opened my eyes, they only had the emergency lights on. Every, almost everybody was gone. And it was about six days <clears throat> after I left those meetings that the Lord said, now's the time for Fort Worth. Wow. And I went. 
And I know, you know, when you're hearing people preach that have 6,000 churches under them and they lay hands on you, it's, it, you get enough to get a second one, even though you're not looking for them. An older man of God said, the quality of your life will largely be determined by the quality of hands that are laid on your head. And so that's not a conference. To, to, we're having in different good speakers that are going to give their 38-minute message they gave at the last place. It is, a, it is a, um, an encounter with God week. Eight days to encounter God, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. So I would encourage you, if you're able to get to Pittsburgh, it's a short flight away. Uh, if you're willing to risk Spirit Airlines, you can get there. <laughs> you can do it. I would love to have California overrepresented in Pittsburgh. Because if you came to those meetings, it would teach a lot of the people on the East Coast how to take care of themselves and how to dress properly. Amen. So it would, why are you offended on their behalf? I mean, you guys look nice. I thought the people watching on, at home would be upset. So I would love you to be there and have our California family represent those meetings. I promise you, you are not going to go out there and spend the money for the hotel and, and airplane and everything. And that's it. There's no ticket, no parking. There's none of that. It's free. You are not going to do that and say, boy, I wish I had that money back. You're going to come back changed by the power of God. So we don't, if you want to know what night anybody's speaking, I'm not telling you because it's not that kind of meeting. I don't want people bringing their crowd and then they leave. And, and let me tell you something. Of that lineup, there's nobody on that lineup that you don't need to hear what they say. You need what every one of those people have. And so um, come to those meetings and you'll be glad that you did. Can you say amen? amen. If you feel called to ministry, this is my last night, so let me just knock a couple things out. We have a Bible college called Revival Today Bible Institute. Jesus said, the harvest is great. Everybody say, the harvest is great. The harvest is great. But, the are few. but the labors are few. So he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest and ask him to send workers out into the field. You hear people pray a lot. Oh, God, touch California. Oh, God, touch Arizona. Oh, God, touch Mexico. That's not how it works. Because he's the head and we're the body. So to touch a place, God actually raises up people. You know, Pastor Greg that I introduced you to, that's what Morris Cirillo did. He heard a call from God to go to the nations. That's what I'm, uh, I love, I love, I'm not from here. So maybe I don't have a right to say I love California and I love, love Californians. But when I watch what's happened on the news and can see the, the easily discernible overt plan to destroy a state. I took a family out to eat last night with me and Abraham and was hearing them, you know, we work two jobs. I work two jobs. My son works two jobs. We can barely make it. And then, and then have people tell you, well, just go on, just go on uh, disability or just go on government assistance. You'd basically be making the same or more if you did that. And she said, I don't want to do that. I feel like you lose your dignity when you do that. When there's an attempt to burden a people down where they work and work and have nothing to show for it and frustrate them, I don't like that. And so, and then the introduction of drugs and fentanyl. Don't tell me that we have the NSA that records every text message I send and every phone call I make, and they couldn't drone strike every fentanyl plant right now and be done with it. But I, I believe, and I don't believe I'm wrong, I know I'm right. I believe a decision's been made. Why stop the importing of drugs into the country if you can get a cut out of it? And so uh, you're not going to hear a preacher say this much, but I'm going to give you a homework assignment because you're staring at me. I want you to go home and watch Sicario 1 and then watch Sicario 2, and it'll give you a little lesson on how things are working. That, that, that I, I believe, how come when Texas went to close the border, the federal government not only didn't help them, they sued them? Because it's going to take money out of a lot of people's pockets. That's a hundred billion dollar industry. The trafficking of humans, it's too, you know, I went to go visit Border Patrol. I just got back from being with Border Patrol and praying with them. So I brought it up to them. I said, how does somebody get from Yemen to the Mexican border? You can't walk across the Atlantic Ocean. And you can't, with a Yemeni passport, you can't fly to Mexico. They'd block you from the plane. You have to sail there. To sail there, you have to uh, get permission from the terrorist groups that, that control the, uh, what's that strait called? What is it? Yes, the, the, the strait that's between like Yemen, Somalia, all that. To get your ship from there to sail, you have to pay those groups off. Did anybody see that clip of the guy that came through the border and an independent journalist said, who are you? He said, you don't know who I am? Very soon you will know who I am. 
And they found out he was a terrorist on the terrorist watch list from Azurban, just walked straight through the country. How do you get from Azurban to Mexico? You didn't fly there. You didn't walk there. And so I said to those Border Patrol guys, is it, is it possible that perhaps the drug cartels aren't just operating out of Mexico and Central America, that they've shaken hands with terrorist groups in the Middle East? He said, oh, they have. I said, can I take it one step further? And I told him what I told you. I said, if our government records every one of my phone calls and text messages, you can't tell me they don't know people are coming through that border. I said, so is there a chance that instead of stopping it, because this is when I woke up, why would you sue Texas for trying to, 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 to stop the inflow of people into the country unvetted? If you know they're coming in from, it's not Mexican families. It's Azure Ben, Yemen, Somalia, on down the line. So I said, if you know that, I said, is it possible? And I said, I'm not blaming you guys. You take your orders from above you. Is it possible that decisions have been made on a higher level that, hey, rather than stop this $100 billion a year industry, let's take a cut of it and, and have the money. The Bible, I'm not stupid. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. I said, is it possible that the reason they sued to stop that is because it was going to take money out of the hands of people in federal government? And all the other guys looked at each other and smiled, and they went, we're not allowed to comment on that. We'll just say you've made a very interesting observation. Yes, there are powers. Why? I have a book out there. I'm not saying this to sell books, but I also didn't write it not to be read. There's a book I have out there called Understanding the World in Light of Bible Prophecy. See, if you see everything Republican and Democrat, then you're exactly what they want because it's two heads on the same snake. Can you say Amen. amen. Yeah, it, it, it's just two people advancing the same agenda is basically what it is. And so, but when you see it in Bible prophecy, if there's going to be a one world leader named Antichrist, I mean, his name's, you're not going to see yard signs vote for Joe Antichrist. But what's actually going to happen, according to the word of God, is this Iran-Israel thing is not going to die down. It might die down temporarily, but eventually it's going to hit with such force that a man is going to broker a peace deal. He'll be the first one to get him to stop fighting. And the world will be so happy that he did that, that they'll bow at his feet to worship him. He'll be a one world ruler called Antichrist. His name's not Antichrist. We don't know what his name's going to be yet. Antichrist means Christ is anointed one. Anti-anointing. Anti-everything Christ is. He'll be a false messiah to the world. There'll be a one world ruler, one world government, one world money system. So why is there an attempt? Why are we $32 trillion in debt? It's done on purpose. Because how can the government be that stupid? It's not stupid. It's an agenda. If you're going to have a one world government, a one world ruler, a one world military, a one world money system, that, and a one world religion, five, five fold agenda of the Antichrist out of Revelation 13, then you cannot have a strong independent nation. So there's only one domino left to fall. Canada's gone. You hear people say, I'm out of this country. If certain people win the election this year, I'm moving. To where? <laughs> there's nowhere left to go. I'm going to go down to Barbados. There's, if they want to take Barbados, they can take it like this. Costa Rica, there's no military to hold them off. So there's one country left, one strong sovereign nation that's left that has to collapse before there can be a one world government. And demonic people have made up their mind to kick the legs intentionally. How does the mayor of Denver today, well, I'm sucking the air out of the room. Let me just suck it all out. <laughs> How does the mayor of Denver today, because of, 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 of the settlement, this is not an answer. First of all, if you try to frame this, that it's anti-Hispanic, Azurban's not a Hispanic nation. And I'm not anti-people from Azurban. It's, it, it's, it's an attempt to overload the country and destroy the nation and to let in. They have over 170 jihadists that have come in the country that they don't know where they're at. So who knows what's being planned? You only need three or four to do some damage and to organize something. And so if that's what's happening, I'm not anti-Hispanic. I married a Puerto Rican, and then together we help make another Hispanic. So I've contributed something to the Latino community, an actual person. This, does, this has nothing to do with race. This has to do with the devil wants. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he's the one that weakens the nations. When you let the devil in, he weakens and destroys. You know, don't, 
I, I'm not trying to make people laugh, but I don't have to try. People laugh. I'm not trying to over, over put, you know, over talk that thing that happened last week. But you know, you let that unclean act into your church. And what happened within a few days? There's division between the ministers. There's an uproar in the congregation. There's people yelling at the pastor. When you let demons in, they destroy. They'll destroy a home. They'll destroy a city. They'll destroy a state. And they'll weaken the nation. And so when you see those things happening, you know what it gives me a desire to do? It doesn't give me a desire to say, well, let's just pray. Let's keep the nation in prayer. Yes, there is the place of prayer. But Jesus didn't walk through the countryside praying over Israel. When he saw the people and saw their needs were great, he had compassion on them and taught them many things. Then the Bible says in Matthew 9, he taught then preached, then healed all the sick. I don't know what the connection is in the spirit, but there's something about casting out devils and healing the sick that kicks the devil in his no-no place. He doesn't like it. It drives his hold out. It loosens his hold. So if the devil's looking to take California out, it's time for the church to get on fire with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Teach the word. Preach the gospel. Cast out devils. Heal the sick. And see all of his plans uprooted. If you believe it, can you say amen? amen? You know, if you don't understand Bible prophecy right, then what people think, because like everything I just taught you, then you'd say, well, you know, really then, what's the point of even having this meeting today? If there's going to be a one world government and a one world agenda, turn to 2 Thessalonians with me. If I got in this deep, I might as well finish it out, pleading my case. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 1. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them. Even if they claim to have had a special vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us, don't be fooled by what they say. For that day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God. I didn't come to California to bash the LGBT community. So this is not to be taken that way. As you can tell by how I'm dressed, I'm an ally of the community. I'm sharing, wearing this jacket to show my support. I'm making a point. Everybody say a great rebellion against God. Why is it when they have those pride parades, there's only one God that's ever mocked on any of the floats? It's not like there's one, one float that's mocking Christ on the cross, followed by another float that's, uh, you better watch those doors as I'm preaching, because these are the kind of messages that, if there's any devils present in the, in the hotel, not in the lobby, like even on the eighth floor, somebody's going to come down. <laughs> I don't like you. So why is it that there's not one float that has a cross on it where they're mocking Christ, then the next float where they're mocking Buddha, then the next float they're mocking Shiva, then the next float they're mocking Muhammad. No, there's only one God. See, as a preacher's kid, to make sure I wasn't just continuing on something my father believed in, these are the kind of thoughts I had. How come there's only one group they'd attack in my high school? There was every kind of club was allowed except a Bible club. You know, why is there one God, there's seemingly one God that the devil hates when people don't know God? There's one God's name they'll take in vain. Nobody gets mad and yells, Buddha! <laughs> no, there's one God, there's one God that they'll say. They'll yell out, Jesus Christ, and take that name in vain. It's almost like by, as a bystander, you can tell. There's one God there's one, there's one thing that the devil is very troubled by. 
Why can't those Christians shut up about what they believe? You'll never hear that statement about any other group. You'll never hear, why can't those Buddhists shut up about what they believe? Why can't, why can't the LGBT shut up? About, no, everybody's allowed to tell their beliefs, and then the Christians are shamed into silence. How come you Christians can't keep your religion to yourself? Because it's against our religion to keep our religion to ourselves. When Jesus rose from the dead, he commanded them, go into all the world and preach the good news that I save, that I heal, that I deliver, that there's no pit that you're in, that if you call on me, I won't pull you out of. Can you say amen? amen. Preach. This is the best I can do. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and how it will happen. First, There'll be a great rebellion against God. Not I don't believe in God, a rebellion against God, a hatred. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3, there'll be haters of God. I hate, I don't talk to me about that Christianity stuff. We had a lady in our church last week, she told me at our seniors brunch, because I'll, I'll preach like this, then I fly home for Saturday and then do a seniors brunch or something pastoral just to, to meet with the people. So they, this lady said, can I say something? She said, I got inspired by your boldness. That's, that is one point of what I do what I do because you thought you were crazy. Now you've met someone who's crazier and you don't feel crazy anymore. But if you think you're, you're, you're too bold, then you're not going to do much. She said, so when I was watching you, it inspired me to be more bold. So what do I mean by more bold? So she got a placard, started kicking over stuff. No, she works as a home care provider. And she said the man she was taking care of was in end stage cancer. And they, they called her into the house. And he, he said, not knowing he, he, she's a Christian, he said, I ordered a Bible, and I want to know about God and Jesus. He said, because I'm going to die, and I don't even know where I'm going. He said, I feel so lost. It's amazing when everything gets stripped away in the busy, On the inside, people know they're lost without God. And he said, I want help. And she said, I'm a Christian. She said, I can help you. And she took his hand and talked to him about Jesus and led him to the Lord and prayed for him. And he was so thankful. He sat up in bed and hugged her crying. He could feel he had been born again. Well, what, what, was, her, what was her payback for that? She got the, the next nurse. She's the home care provider. They sent a nurse in next. And he was so thrilled. He wasn't complaining. He was so thrilled. The joy, the Bible says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. He felt that so strong that he started mouthing off about it to the nurse. This lady came in and prayed for me. I've never felt so at peace. I've never felt such a weight lift off my shoulders. And that nurse went to the, the, head, of the head manager and turned her in. So they told her on Monday, you're in trouble. You're, you're, you're probably going to get fired. You have a meeting not with your manager. You have a meeting with all five managers and the owner of the company. That's trouble. See, that's overkill. See, that, that, that lets you know when that kind of stuff happens that you're on the right track. It's like I, I, I was preaching one time in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and they said there were noise complaints. They, they had six cop cruisers come for a noise complaint. What, do you do that for every noise complaint? Send six squad cars? They don't even do that for shootings. So, so sometimes, I'm telling you this because when it feels like there's an overkill of attack against your life, it's a sign that you're on the right track. When the devil sends a Goliath, it's a sign that there's a destiny that he thinks is worth knocking out. I see you fulfilling every destiny that God's put on your life in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, can you say amen? So they called her into the meeting, and she, you should see this lady. She's in her 50s, very nice, placid, wanted her to fly type of lady, which believe it or not, I'm like that. And Lester Summerall said, Smith Wigglesworth outside of the pulpit was the most docile person you'd ever see. It's the fire. It's not about your, you, be, you be being, being wired a certain way. When you get on fire, if I lit you on fire right now, you wouldn't say, um, I know I'm burning, but I was raised Presbyterian, so I don't really, re no. You don't care whether you're Catholic or what, you're going to run, you're going to yell. When the fire gets on you, it turns you into a different person. And even as I'm preaching, I see that fire coming upon your head. I tell you that fire will never go out in Jesus' mighty name. 
This Friday night we're gonna, is going to be the worst Friday night that the devil's ever had in Los Angeles. We're going to raise up a new generation of believers that say enough is enough. You're not going to run drugs into California. You're not going to destroy this generation. We're going to see revival. Shake this state one more time. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. If you believe that with me, shout amen like thunder. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So she said, she said, uh, when they called me in, they, and they reprimanded me. She said, something rose up in me like a volcano. It's, called the, it's the Holy Spirit. And she said, I just want to tell you, I'm not sorry for anything I've done. Nothing, maybe nothing in America, nothing in all this life feels better than telling somebody that wants an apology that you're not sorry. I'm not sorry for anything I did. She said they all jerked their heads up. She said, if I had it to do all over again, I'd have done everything the exact same way. Then, you know, the Bible says, don't worry about when you're in situations like that, for the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. So she said, I thought, it, I thought we were trained. You tell us in the mission statement, we're to provide more than just physical care. And he reached out to me. And she said, I've looked it up. It's not illegal. When someone asks me about God to answer their question, just like I answer any other question they have that I know the answer to. And she said, I, if, she said if you fire me, I'll be, I'll be proudly fired, and I know my God will give me another job. But I will not stop telling people who ask me about Jesus and how he made a way where there is no way. And apparently the anointing on what she said, I mean, you're clapping for it, and it's an example. The anointing was so on what she said that the owner spoke up and said, I, well, I'm a Christian too, and I just want to tell you, you're not going to be fired. And he said, if I, was, if I was in your shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. But see, that fire is stronger than what you think. When he said that, she said, with all due respect, sir, to the owner, no, you wouldn't have, or you wouldn't have called this meeting. And, 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 and it convicted him, because that's the problem in America. I, I, I think I shared this when I was here in January. There was a little kid. My wife, Adalis, does children's church on Sunday. She preaches. She prepares and preaches. If you go in there, you'd think she was doing a crusade. The, the, the super church lesson for children a few Sundays ago was on Israel and Bible prophecy. She had a map out telling those kids about that, teach, preaching to them like they're adults. And so uh, this kid that was in that class, they were laying hands on people to get filled with the Holy Spirit. He got filled with the Holy Spirit. What happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Lots of things happen. Yeah. Namely, the kid went home and on his mother's computer printed out 30-some invitations for all his classmates to church. He made them with, like, clip art. And then at nine years old, printed them out and took them to school and passed them out to all his friends to please come to church with him. And so what happened? This is in Pennsylvania. There's, a, there's no devil in California. There's the same devil. Same devil in Syria. Same devil in Iraq. Same devil in Pennsylvania. Same devil in California. Same, and the same blood of Jesus that kicked his tail 2,000 years ago. And the same power of the Holy Ghost that broke the power of death. And that power isn't out there somewhere. That power is available to be on the inside of you. That's what you're leaving with tonight. You're not going to fight the devil in your own strength. And then up on antidepressants and all kinds of medication. You're going to beat the devil's tail for free because there's a fire that's in you that's greater than the power of the devil. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. So, so uh, the, the vice principal called and said, hey, your son came today and was passing out invitations to church and that's not allowed. Let me tell you something. And I'm telling you this, you need, there shouldn't be every group can stand up for their rights than Christians. Okay. Or you'll lose it. Let me tell you something, in Europe and Canada, all the rights they've taken away from Christians, they weren't doing anyway. I had a pastor in Europe tell me, he said, I saw those crusades you're doing in America. He said, we're not allowed to do these here in Europe because they made public crusades. You're allowed to sing, but you can't preach. I said, well, when was the last time you did one? And he said, oh, must have been close to 20 years ago. Yeah, that's right. Any ground you concede, you lose. 
If you stop doing meetings like this, it would only be a matter of time before hotels just had policies that Christians can't meet there. The devil takes ground that you concede. But when you step forward, everywhere the sole of your foot will tread, you're on land that I've given to you. I see you taking new ground this year. I see God putting a fire on you this year to do what the devil said you couldn't do. The church in California is going to get set ablaze tonight. I'm telling you, there's going to be far-reaching effects. After tonight, the devil's not going to know what hit him because the church is alive and well in California. Somebody shout hallelujah. Your son can't pass those out. Is that true? Can't pass out invitations to church? Then, then they better ban every invitation. If you allow anything, you got to allow everything. They said that we can't start a Bible club. Then you better ban every other club or I'm going to sue this place till it's named after me. <laughs> there was a girl that came to my revival meeting in Georgia a few years back. She got real on fire in the meeting. See, when you get on fire, what did Jesus say would happen? This is a part of it that's not preached much. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you and will be my witnesses to Jerusalem Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. When the fire comes on you, that's why I'm in California. How God, no doubt you know, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good. When you get anointed, you go about. Nobody gets on fire. And you, get on, you get on the move. There's people that are here that were at what Noah has seen last year, just felt to go. You start moving with God. Go to different nations to preach. There's a lady, Pastor Sandy, in Houston, Texas, and her husband, George. Her husband, George, was high up in the cartels. His twin brother was killed. I don't mean he was a drug dealer. I mean, he, he's from Mexico in the cartels, was in prison, and then he got saved. And they go back to Mexico, and because he was in the cartels, he knows what to look out for. So she'll preach, he'll watch, and when he can tell kids are riding around on bicycles and texting, and it's starting to get time to wrap up. He'll give her the signal to wrap up, give the altar call, pray for people, and get out. Because God will take people that the devil used to use, anoint you, and send you back to make you sorry that he didn't kill you when he had the chance. There's a room full of people like that tonight. I said there's a room full of people like that. That after tonight, the devil will rue the day that he didn't kill you when he had the chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that little girl. Yeah, that's what faith does. Start jumping around. It's a quickening spirit. Start saying, little, little kid. Come on. It's a quickening power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. I wasn't the home care provider. That's why I'm telling you all stories about other people. Because if it's all left to one evangelist or one pastor, we're screwed. But if all of you get on fire, and now there's like sleeper cell agents, not terrorists, but people in the Holy Ghost. You can, you can ban preachers from public school. You can ban preachers from coming in to whatever job you work at. But you can't stop the Holy Ghost. And that spirit, when he comes into you, now you take Jesus with you wherever you go. They shall receive power and become my witnesses to, Jeru to L.A., to San Diego, to Sacramento, to Las Vegas, to Scottsdale. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You're going to get on the move for God. You're feet aren't going to stay still this year. I see a fresh wind. I see a fresh wind. I see a fresh wind. No doubt you know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the next preacher I hear tell me, the people in California are, are dead spiritually. I go say, are you sure you were in California? I barely can finish my message. About to turn into a riot. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I'm not blowing smoke tonight. There's going to be hundreds of people that leave this meeting that the devil will be very sorry he didn't take you out when he had the chance. He thought, you know why a lot of you should be encouraged? Because the truth is, the devil's already hit you with his best shot. He already emptied two clips into you. And like a Holy Ghost 50 cent, you're still up walking around. Can you say amen? 
He actually doesn't even have anything left to fire your way. He couldn't even keep you out of a revival meeting in L.A. at the airport on a Friday night. I tell you, the time of the devil reigning in terror over your life, it ended yesterday. Now a new chapter begins where you get on fire with the Holy Ghost and run roughshod over him. Say it right out loud. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. One more time. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. You know, I don't live here. So maybe I have a different perspective because I haven't had to see maybe what you've seen. But I've been waking up every day. Come here. Oh, I bind, the, I bind these foul spirits. Let me tell you something real quick. What is Los Angeles? Even if you only have limited Spanish... You could probably take a guess and get it. What does Los Angeles mean? The angels. Not, it's not Los Diablos. They named it the angels. That the people that came here felt the presence of God. I told you Azusa Street birthed out of here. I told you the largest church in the country, Amy Simple McPherson Angeles Temple, was here. And Billy Graham's ministry launched out of Los Angeles. He was a small campus crusade for Christ, preacher. And then he had that tent meeting here. And the head of the LA Times gave, heard him preaching and gave the word Puff Graham, which was newspaper talk back then, for give him front page, push him like we push the top movie stars. And Billy Graham launched. He wasn't from LA. He was from North Carolina. This place launched him. This is a major city. That's why the devil wants this well stopped up. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not saying things out of pride. I hate when preachers talk like, like I'm, going, I'm coming from Pittsburgh and I'm going to be, everybody else screwed up but me and I'm going to fix everything. I don't mean it like that. But I am telling you, I'm not goofing off here. I'm not coming here for an, an excuse to go to the ocean or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm here because I don't want to swat at this place. I don't want to preach here like once or for a week. I, I, want, I want God to use my life to pour it out as an offering into this great city with these great people and use me to flow through me. The people that are discouraged, or beat down, or stuck in a church that has no evangelism program, that God would use these meetings to put something on the inside of you and remind you, you are not forgotten. You are a part of this last day move of God. So rejoice and be glad for I have already given you the victory. Somebody shout victory. victory. Say victory is mine. Victory is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it one more time. The Lord is good. Lord is and his mercy endures forever. His mercy forever. So I was trying to tell a story. My dad went to go preach in a little village in Alaska called Amonic. And the pastor that was there kept telling my dad, and my dad's like way nicer than me. He's like a, a, he's like a real Christian. <laughs> so, he wears like normal suits. He's not dressed like he's trying to kill Batman. <laughs> he's like a good preacher. So my dad, my dad's preaching for this missionary up there, and his church won't grow. It only has a few people in eight, 11. And then when my dad's with him, the guy keeps saying, the, the American missionary, he says, this village is called a monarch. There's so much sexual abuse here and drug abuse and alcoholism. We call it demonic. And it, after he said it the third time, it kept irritating my dad's spirit. And the third time he said it, my dad said, quit saying that. Death in life is in the power of... Yeah, I feel like this state is just, you know, California, there's like a stronghold here. The stronghold is you. You loosen demonic power out of your mouth. You get, I have at one time here said, in Jesus' name, I, I, I bind these evil people that live in L.A. No. Father, thank you for this beautiful place. I don't know what moved in here in the last 25 years, but I think it's moving out. I thank you that the tide's turning. 
I thank you for authority over drug addiction. I thank you for authority over all the power of the devil. I thank you that you said you'll build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I thank you for building big churches, plural, in Los Angeles. I thank you that what you did here before, you're doing again right now. I thank you for great women that will attend these meetings. I thank you for strong men that will attend these meetings. I thank you for using this week to do great and mighty things in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Start using your mouth not to call this place demonic. Call it what it is. I thank you, Father. This is a city of angels, and angels aren't working against us. Angels are helpers sent to aid those who are the heirs of salvation. I thank you that you're here, O oh Lord. I thank you that Jesus is in Los Angeles. I thank you that the Holy Ghost is in Los Angeles. I thank you the devil is not going to have Compton, Long Beach, Huntington Beach, Los Angeles proper, Orange County. No, Anaheim. We claim this place for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. My dad said, quit calling this place demonic. And he, you know, he took it pretty hard. He said, demonic sounds more to me like angelic. And that night my dad preached on angels. And he said, you know, he got up and said, I heard this place is called demonic. To me, that sounds like angelic. And he started to say how I felt every morning when I wake up here. I look at the mountains and the beautiful sky. And I see God's hand in this place. I see God's hand on you. See, you don't win talking negative. That's why churches are always battling the devil. You know, there was a move that went through in the 80s and 90s. People would wear camouflage army pants to church and combat boots and go to war against the powers of hell. And then when, when, when a great preacher rebuked that, the, the guy that was for it said, yeah, but the Bible says we are in a battle. Yeah, it says we're in a race too, but I'm not hearing Adidas skin-tight tracksuit and one-ounce shoes. Can you say amen? I'm not battling the devil. I don't have to get him under my feet. He is under my feet. Do you know when my dad preached there that week? And I'm not making up stories. I'm telling you what happened. Started preaching in the positive direction. The head native doctor from that village got saved. People got delivered. You can't go and possess a land with a rotten mouth. How many of the Israelites did God want to take the promised land? 100% of them. How many of them went in? Two families. What was the difference? Ten spies that sent, spread their evil report of unbelief. They said, we are not able, for there's giants in the land. They were so focused on the giants that they felt the giants had the ability to stop the promises of God. But two guys who God said they have a different spirit. They said, yes, there are giants in the land. We're not denying that there's fentanyl and crack and abuse and everything else. But if the Lord is with us, they are but bread for us. Let us go at once and take the country and possess it from Jordan to the sea. Everybody said, let us go at once. You know, something about seeing Israel launching missiles at Iran doesn't give me the impression we're dealing with an abundance of time. It's, it's really the only thing that troubles me in life is I just wish, I wish I could split into like six. I wish I, I, I'd keep one of me here. I'd put one of me full-time in Fort Worth. I'd put one in Pittsburgh. I'd put one full-time on the road. <laughs> then Dag Haywood Mills pulled me aside and said, I have five caravans to do crusades. Because you can't do three straight weeks of crusades if you only have one stage and sound and all that. Because you've got to drive to the next country and set it all up. So he has them in multiple places. So he can just do like three weeks like that. He said, uh, I'd like you if you'd be interested. To take one of the caravans, and I'll give you one of my crusade directors, and do crusades in Africa. He said, oh, it'll add something to your ministry. It'll keep you from getting like a, he, said, he was naming me a bunch of preachers that America just swallowed up. He's like, if you stay in one place, that place will swallow you up. Keep moving. And he said, if you go to Africa, and it's true. That's why I took Adalis to, to Liberia. I said, I, I'm sure you don't want to come to Liberia. I said, but you coming here and preaching here. And being here will make sure you never turn into like a, an American woman preacher. How many of you believe in for a new Louis Vuitton scarf? You know, I have one, but I, I have bigger fish to fry. 
Can you say amen? I have bigger things on my dream board than a new purse. No, you can actually go and make impact in your nation. Can you say amen? And so he said, would you be interested in that? I said, yeah, so we're planning. I would take a, a sliver of me if I could divide myself and put one full time in Africa. And then I'd have one do run crusades full time here. I mean, there's so much. That must have been how Jesus felt. The heart, there's so much work to do, and there's hardly anybody working. Nobody's interested. Even when you have a bunch of people come to Bible college, you get like out of a class of 100, maybe one going to full-time ministry, maybe two. They'll go back to Banana Republic, CVS, back home to be with their mom. You like, it's like hard. It's difficult to get somebody to catch the fire and go. Jonathan, I feel called in the ministry. Do you have online? Just quit now. <laughs> Why do you need online? Well, I have a job. Yeah, just, it's done. It's done. Is that what Peter said? Peter, leave your nets and come follow me. Do you have online? <laughs> I, been, I have this fishing business. There is, there's something to leave in everything. I want to encourage you. Anything good I have in my life came from run. Came from, if the Lord speaks to me to do something, I do it right now. You tell me to go to California, I'll have the flight plan f filed before you get Inya out of your mouth. I'll go, I'll go. When I say it as a kid, I meant it then. <clears throat> we used to sing songs as little kids in Pentecostal church that I don't hear people sing anymore. They were like, they weren't praise and they weren't worship. They're songs of consecration. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, or mountain or sea or plains. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll do what you want me to do, O oh Lord. Take my life and let it be consecrated more to thee. I don't see that in the modern church, but it's coming back. It's coming into you right now. That I'm going to take my life. I'm not waiting. Take every message you've ever heard about waiting for your season and flush it down the toilet. I'm telling you. Okay, I'll quote Jesus then. I know that was a little rough, but he said it stronger. Go to John chapter 4. Where is this guy getting all this strength? Jesus is praying for everybody. You know, one night, Oral Roberts laid hands on 9,000 people. Do you know how many people that is? It's exactly 9,000. That's my dad coming out of me. I was with my dad one time, and he told that his birthday is October 25th, and this guy came up to him after church and went, do you know my birthday is October 25th? Fifth? What's the odds of that? My dad, like, without blinking, went, exactly one in 365. <laughs> do you know how many people? It takes about, if you're moving fast, it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to lay hands on 2,200 people. I'm talking healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. And your shoulders get tired. Then you switch arms. Then that shoulder gets tired. Those guys, that's how they work. So Jesus, he's not in an air-conditioned building. Like I was complaining that this place is too hot. I'm not getting any sympathy from Jesus or Paul. They're in the Middle East preaching in direct sunlight with no microphone, no monitors. And so he taught the crowd, 5,000 not counting the women and children. So probably women and children are more at any full gospel meeting. So 20,000, 25, 30,000. And he taught, then preached, then laid his hands. Not had them scan a QR code if they'd like prayer that week. Not our, my prayer partners are here and I, we have to clear the parking lot. Then he laid hands on everybody. Then when he got done laying hands on everybody, they went and got the children that weren't at the meeting and said, hey, I, I have my grandkids now. Will you bless them? And the disciples stepped in and went, that's enough. Okay, the guy's been working all day. He taught, he preached, he laid hands on everybody. Quit bringing more people. And Jesus, what did Jesus say? Thanks for blocking them. What did he say? Don't forbid the children, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And then he laid his hands on the children. And they said, where is this guy? Is somebody sneaking in meals while we're not looking? Jesus replied, John 4, 34. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God. 
I think this is my fifth straight week out preaching. I feel better now than I did at week one. It's hard to feel bad in California. Even the drug addicts that were asleep down at Venice Beach last night were smiling. I'm not promoting drug addiction, but California is a nice place is all I'm saying. And so uh, as you do the will of God, the Bible says in Proverbs 11, 25, those that refresh others will be refreshed themselves. As God pours out of you to other people, there's a natural refreshing that comes from it. How many of you feel a refreshing coming right now? Sister Clarita, make sure you don't have to do it now, but I want to sing that song, I, I Feel a Fresh Wind Blowing Across This Land. You're going to leave here refreshed, my friend. Whatever the devil's done in 2023, during the lockdowns of 2020 through 2022, to, make, to wear you out, there's going to be a double. You're not going to get back to where you left. You're going you're gonna to start soaring in Jesus' name. You're not going to go up and down. You're going to go from glory to glory, victory to victory, and strength to strength, whether the devil likes it or not. I tell you in the name of Jesus, the last backward step you took will be the last backward step you ever take. Everybody here that's waiting on their season, I'm telling you as a minister of the gospel, your season is now. That we are at the end. It's time for every young person, every mother and father, every older person to stand up, take a new grip on the cross of Jesus Christ and say, I'm going to write one more chapter with God and it's going to be a glorious chapter. you believe it, shout aloud, amen. amen. Then Jesus explained. By the way, I should announce I'm going to be in Redlands, California next month with Pastor Michael. And then Modesto, when? Anybody know when I'm going to be in Modesto? No, get on next week, unless I'm double booked. Week after Redlands? Oh. So, so I'm coming to, Cal when I say I'm coming to L.A. every quarter, I'm coming to L.A. California, I'm going to hit. I almost, a few weeks ago, I almost canceled every meeting I had that wasn't on the West Coast. I was, I was this close, but I wanted to keep, I don't, I don't know, maybe I should have. I just really feel in my spirit that, like, in the place that God, that people have said God's least likely to move, and even that God can't move. I mean, you got preachers on TV that have just been given up on California. Boy, it's going to get hit by an earthquake and dropped into the ocean. Hey, thanks, Cranky. <laughs> thanks for the good word. Well, see, I get irritated when I hear people talk like that because then basically you're implying that I, I can't hear the voice of God. Or God, what does God want to drown me? Why can't he drown me in Atlantic City, closer to my house? Can I get, drowned in, can I get knocked in the Atlantic Ocean? I got to come out here. I'm telling you right now, God hasn't given up on any one of you. God loves the people of Los Angeles. God loves the people of California. God loves people. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up, look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. Yeah, that guy saying, I feel so lost. I want to know how to go to heaven. That didn't happen in the 1800s. That happened three weeks ago in Pittsburgh. Never been to church. People come into my church all the time that I ask them, what church did you come from? Oh, we never went to church. How'd you come here? You know what the one lady told me? She said, my, I was praying. <laughs> she doesn't go to church. She's never been to church. She's about 30 years old. I was praying, God, I want to know you. Show me a church to go to. And then I heard about yours, and I wanted to go there. You'd be amazed the prayers God's been answering for our ministry. You know, one, one, one lady came to our church because the Uber driver that picked her up at the airport told her, she, he pointed to our billboard with me and Adonis on it and said, you need to go to that church. It's an awesome church. Starts telling her how great a church it is. She goes, uh, do you go? He goes, no, I don't go to church. <laughs> so I got, I got a pagan telling people they need to come to my church. Can you say amen? I walked, I walked into Nordstrom 
I walked into Nordstrom in, in uh, Pittsburgh. That's like our Rodeo Drive. And we walked in. I kid you not, I walk in, and the guy that runs the shoe department, tall guy, I talked to him once or twice. He said, it's you. You know, when people say, I don't know, he said, yes, yes, it's me. He goes, uh, hold on, I got to get my wife on FaceTime. And so he puts his wife on FaceTime. She looked like, as most women do, if you put her on FaceTime without notice, none too happy that they didn't have a chance to do hair and makeup and you're exposing them to a stranger. So she looked at me, I could tell she was a little irritated. He said, honey, you got you to gotta see this. You know who he is? She went, yeah, that's the guy on the billboard. He said, my wife and I were just driving on Interstate 376, and we were saying, we need to come, we need to start going to church again. We both grew up in church. We've been out of church for 15 or 20 years. And he said, uh, I just need to know where to go. And we looked up, and your billboard was there. Our billboard says, <laughs> when the devil starts messing, God starts blessing. I just wanted to put that in people that are going through a hard time, that when the enemy's messing with you, get ready because God's got a blessing to overtake it. So he said, we pointed up at that and said, we should go there. That was yesterday. And then I came to work today and you walked in. So, so I wanted to show my wife, we'll be at your church. So I shook his hand. He gave me a hug. And then I went to go shop. I turn, walk about 10 steps, and there was a janitor from Honduras. Or as I used to say, Honduras. But then my wife told me, it's Honduras. So I, he's from Honduras, and he goes, excuse me. He said, uh, can you pray for me? I said, you know me? He said, I saw you on television. And I said, I came to your church two Sundays ago. I'm, I'm going to start coming. And he lifted his hands. I thought I, I felt like I was in a dream. I'm in Nordstrom on the East Coast. And there's a, And I laid my hands on him and prayed. You know, what are they going to do? Kick you out? And if they do, who cares? Just order on Amazon. So I laid my, and I, I'll tell you, as bold as I seem right now and everything, 10 years ago, I'd have been weirded out praying for somebody in Nordstrom, even as a preacher. I just, like, I'm not wired that way. I like minding my own business. But I, I see such a hunger. Look at this. I'm, not, I'm nobody. I'm not saying that to be humble. I'm literally, I'm factually a nobody. I have no, I don't have 100,000 followers on Instagram. I don't have a, I don't have a, a what's the rec, X? I don't have 100,000 followers on that. I'm, I'm not Joel Osteen or somebody to call a meeting in a ballroom and people come. There's a hunger. There's people that, they're just scrolling through Facebook, looking to go to church, looking at stuff come up on the screen, like as if people don't have enough to do here. How many of you have been up, how many of you have been up since at least six in the morning? Of course you have. Because you don't have a choice. Governor Newsom has seen to it. If you don't wake up before six, you're going to starve to death in this state. Amen. <laughs> People work hard, people work all day, people go to school all day, and then something popped up in your feed of an AI preacher's face on Tupac Shakur's body. <laughs> and something on the inside of you said, I need what he has, what he's bringing to California. You know that's the Lord, because that doesn't make any sense. Can you say amen? And people drove up from San Diego and all over from Redlands and all over California. People were down from Modesto earlier this week. People over from Las Vegas. And they all share one thing in common. It's not their age. It's not their skin color. It's not their socioeconomic background. Everybody in this room has one thing in common. That there's a desire. I thank God for everything he's done in me. But something's churning in me that there's more. There's something for God that God has me to do. And I have good news for you. You're on the right track. There is something God has for you to do. You're going to have the best nine months that you've ever had from now through December. When we come back in July, there won't be one person who doesn't return with a testimony saying, surely the Lord has done great things in Jesus' name. If you receive that, let's take 30 seconds and celebrate it. Clap your hands, all you people. Come on, take 30 seconds and lift it up. Lift him up, for he's worthy. In Jesus' name, everybody said, you can be seated. Wake up. I saw 10 seconds. I didn't realize there was a praise uh, clock keeper. Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up, look around. The fields are already ripe. If I was in the ministry in Los Angeles, which I am tonight, I want to say it's hard to get people to come to church here. I want to say people are busy. I want to, 
You, you, you shrink, you boa constrict your own ministry with your own mouth. I would say, thank you, Father, that Jesus said. You're never wrong when you quote Jesus. Thank you, Father, that Jesus said that L.A. is white under harvest. Thank you that you're going to send people in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Toot my ears to listen to what people are saying. I'm telling you, when we come back in July, not only will no one not have a testimony, no one won't have a story of how you led someone to the foot of the cross and brought them out of sin, out of sickness, out of addiction, and laid them at the feet of Jesus. And you're going to come back smiling like a butcher's dog, saying, Preacher, Jesus used me to set this place ablaze. It's time. There's enough firepower in this room tonight to blow the devil straight back out into the Pacific Ocean. Somebody shout amen like thunder. But I say wake up. Look around. The fields are white. Now that has a dual meaning. See, I, I, I totally feel it on the inside of me. I know why I came. When, oh, I said in January I'm coming right back because I feel it now. It's like I'm, I'm not done. Like I tell people when I'm eating at a restaurant because I preach late. Then they turn the lights on real bright like it's time to go. Then if you don't leave, they go, hey, we're closing. I go, I'm not done. I'm not done. I feel a stream running through. The, see, there's, places, there's other places I feel done. But I'm not done here. That's why I'm, I'm, com I'm coming back every quarter. It's not because I'm the best and only God can. I don't mean any of that. But I, I'm going to use my life like the Lord has used it in Pittsburgh and used it in other places. Amen. I'm going to leave something from the inside of me into L.A. Amen. By spiritual power. I'm talking things that are of God, that are stored in this storehouse. I mean, you know, we're nothing. No, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not nothing. You have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So I'm not, ta I'm not bragging about me. But I'm not going to sit. I'm not going to be a preacher that sits back on the East Coast and goes, I don't know, has anyone even live there? I've been here. I know why people live here. I could give you a list of about 25 reasons why to live here. I, I don't like the devil. I, I hate him with every fiber of my being. Something I don't notice in a lot of ministers now. They all talk about love, but true love has a hatred for evil. My love for my family would cause a quick death to someone who broke into my home. Because true love doesn't just love people. The Bible says, love what is good, hate what is evil. And if you don't have that dual thing, then you don't pray for people right. Oh, Lord, be with Sister Betty as she battles this tumor. That's not, you can spot a minister who has a hatred for sickness. They pray differently. You foul tumor, I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ. And somehow they have lulled the body of Christ to sleep in America where they're all love and blankets and bottled waters and, and clean socks and backpacks for back to school, which is great. But God's adding an element into California right now. Amy Simple McPherson, Billy Graham. You ever hear Billy Graham preach in the L.A. Crusade? That guy made me look like an Episcopalian. He would lose sometimes up to 17 pounds in a week when he preached, letting it rip under the tent. Oral Roberts, they hated sin. They hate, not sinners, sin. They hated sickness. They hated disease. They hated addiction. They hated alcoholism. They went at it in the spirit. And I don't hear that much in America, not California, anywhere. But not after today. Because you're going to have a love for God, a fiery, everybody say a passionate love for God. Say this, a fiery love for people. And say a passionate hatred for the devil. Yeah, if you don't have that, then it takes you six hours to cast a demon out of somebody. Now you, you leave in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus is against you. Who's the good boy? I'll give you to the count of three. But when you hate him, he actually, a lot of times, that demon will see in your eyes. 
that it would be a good idea to pack up and get out. And as you're approaching, they'll leave. I told one demon one time, I wasn't even trying to be funny. You're not, I'm not teaching this as a theology, but I just, it just slipped out. I said, you should be glad you're invisible. I'd lay a beating on you. I'd beat, you to, I'd beat your ribs into powder. I hate you. I hate you with every fiber of my being. When you fast and pray, it, starts, it puts a hatred in you for evil. You don't, well, that's how it is. People are on drugs these days. No. No. That's a man created in the image of God. That man has God's dignity. Furthermore, if it wasn't for Tiff and Judy Shuttlesworth teaching me the word, I'd be laying in the tent right next to him. So I make up my mind. Now that I'm free and now that I'm filled, I'm going to slap the devil around. I'm going to remind the devil for the rest of my life on this earth that he's the devil. He's a committed loser. He's the one that I read from Genesis to Revelation that every plan he ever made failed, that he got his butt kicked on the cross. He got his butt kicked in Canaan. He got his butt kicked in Egypt. Every plan he ever made failed, and his plan against my generation is going to fail. Because, yeah, you got a lot of people on your side, but there's more with us than there are with them. I see the hillsides of California surrounded with angels and chariots of fire. Your son's going to come back home. Your husband's going to come back home. The devil will not write your story. I see revival. I see revival. I see women here that are going to mess the devil up. Instead of you having a meeting at your church that there's three witches that live in your apartment complex. Three witches are going to have a meeting that there's one Holy Ghost filled woman that leaves in this apartment complex and our, our, our spells aren't working. It's not working or something's messed up because the greater one is not in them. The greater one lives in you and because he lives, so also shall you live. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of the armies of the Lord. Get ready for the best nine months that you've ever had to trample on the devil like he's dust under your feet. the sole of your foot shall tread. You'll be on land that I've given unto you. Praise God. I see revival. I see good things. Praise God. I see the Lord doing great and mighty things in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see everything the devil meant for bad somehow supernaturally turning around for your good. I see everything turning around for your good. I see everything turning around for your good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to beat the devil. He's already been beaten. He's been stripped not of most of his power. He's been stripped of all of his power. Hallelujah. I pray for my friend here with the button-up shirt, white and, white and black check with gray. Come right out to the aisle. Praise God. I'll get rid of the rose so it doesn't weird you out. With both hands, close both eyes. The hand of the Lord comes upon you tonight to be used mightily in this last day move. In Jesus' mighty name. There's going to be huge crowds that press in to hear the word in this last hour of time in California. And they're not going to be coming for the lattes or the free donuts in the church lobby or to see somebody swallow a sword. They're going to be coming to get touched by the fire of God. 
to be healed. When the doctors say there's no hope, they're going to find out there's somebody who always has hope, who always has a solution. He is Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Can you say amen? amen. Guys, if you would, cue up the Newark video and uh, sh give me the green light when you have it ready. The harvesters are paid good wages. Everybody say the harvesters are paid good wages. I got a Falcon 50 airplane that landed about an hour ago that a guy gave me to use. Then you know why he, it flew away and came back? Because he said, do you mind if I take it back and have your logo painted on it? Well, that lets me know he's not taking it back anytime soon. Can you say amen? It's a lot of money to paint a logo on a plane. You can't get your friend to volunteer to do it. It has to be FAA certified. Why would somebody give somebody a plane? Then when it needed fixed, he paid the maintenance and got me another plane to use while it was getting fixed. If you gave someone a car and it needed to go, would you get them a second car to use? Would you feel bad? I wouldn't feel bad. I wouldn't feel bad if it broke down a mile after I gave it to them. So then, I was doing that broadcast this morning. We started that second church in Fort Worth. When I finished the broadcast, I had nine missed calls from Kofi and, and uh, Bogalis. Did you know about this? Neither did my wife, because she was in the air getting ready to preach tonight. And I had to tell her, and then she told me another testimony. So I said, what is it? They said, this guy wants to tell you something. He pointed at a brand new church. It's a 140-seater. We were looking. We were going to buy a building to do midweek services because we only have the one we're using now for Sundays. And you need youth group, young adults, you know, to make it a proper church. It's a 140-seat church. And he said, uh, it's in Fort Worth. He said, uh, I'm on your worship team, and this church was turned over to me, and I'm giving it to you to your church. It's yours for all, all you want. No pay, no nothing. It belongs to you. So collect the plane, collect the building. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you that Jesus isn't a liar. He said, if you'll go after people, the harvesters are paid good wages. How many of you were here on, on uh, Monday night? Who did we take the offering for? Pastor Dean. That doesn't make any sense to come out here. I paid for all this. So it doesn't make any sense. You know, in the ministry, you're supposed to recoup through offerings. But the Lord said, no, honor that guy. Remember what I said that night? I said, I bet you more will come out of this offering taking it for him than it would have if I took it for me. And I bet you when I obeyed God doing that, then I don't, I've never had a mortgage. I never will have a mortgage. Because as I go into the harvest, <laughs> you know, I gave both security guys 5000 last night and then another family 5000 That's 15000 But I bet you that church costs more than 15000 So when you sow, you reap. When you do what God tells you to do, then God will do for you what you never could have saved up for. Can you say amen? I'm starting, I'm not lying, I'm starting to lose track of the amount of buildings and property I've had given to me. I'm starting to lose track because it's too many. It's too much. It's overflow. It's double for your trouble. I'm going to add a second blessing in that's going to come to you beyond the soul winning and all that. All this effort by the government to frustrate you and to not want to start a business, to say, what's the point of even driving to work? I, if I went on disability or, or welfare, I'd have about as much left as I do after taxes and my salary. What's the point? All these efforts to take your money that you earn and disperse it to other people. God's going to do something about that this year in California for the people of God. God's going to open up the windows of heaven over you. I, you don't have to freeze up. I'm not taking an offering. I'll take one later. I'm telling you what's going to happen between now and July. That God is going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Every hand that's holding back your property, your settlement, your money, your profits, God's going to cut that hand off. And the money that's been held up from the children of God, this Passover is going to flow into their hand. So rejoice and be glad. Because as you go into his field, the harvesters are paid good wages. If you receive that, take 15 seconds one more time. Clap your hands. I'll give you the full 15. Come on, celebrate it. Every plan of the devil to hold you down. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn back to 2 Thessalonians. For that day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God. How many of you feel the Lord doing something in you tonight? 
Now, all you have to do, you say, boy, I, I feel on fire. What, do I, what am I supposed to do? See, people want their whole life figured out. Just get the first instruction from the Lord about where you're, what you're to do. Because that's what happens in meetings like this. Lord, I'll give you one thing to do. Yeah, but what about after that? Do that. To he who uses well what he's been given, he'll be given more and have an abundance. You know, if you own a business and you tell somebody, hey, get me a hot coffee with three creams and one sugar. They said, but then what am I going to do after that? Say, just get me the coffee, then we'll talk about that. Do the first thing you're told. Most people don't do the, the first thing. So whatever God's told you, and then you're going to think that you're doing all these little disconnected assignments, but then as time goes on, they're all going to connect. Can you say amen? amen. And you're going to realize the one that formed you in your mother's womb laid out all your days. And don't worry about the end. Just do what, do what you're told. Yeah, people ask me that. Jonathan, what are you going to do with those? Or what's your plan in Los Angeles? I've never had a plan anywhere. I'm the most unplanned. I do what I'm instructed. I don't have, what are your goals this year? I have no goals. For 43 straight years, I've had no goals. I do what I'm told. What, what do you hear Jesse Duplantis say all the time? I'm yours, Lord, to command. What would you have me to do? I don't have my own life where I'm trying to get something done. You tell me what you want me to do for your kingdom, and it'll be done promptly. Can't you say amen? amen. And it's fun. This, this has been fun. Nice people. Then God must have thought I did an okay job. He gave me a little. You know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense if you need a building in, in Texas to go preach in California and spend a bunch of money here, but this is not my business. I do what the boss says to do. And what you make happen for me, I'll make happen for you. Can you say amen? amen. See, only a deceptive devil could make people think there's something to lose for serving God. Yeah, but if I go to Bible school, I, and I'm not saying you got to go to Bible school, but whatever the thing is that in the natural seems like it would just be a giant loss. The harv say with me, the harvesters are paid good wages. <laughs> Praise God. So I'll finish it, then I'll leave you alone for a season. Exactly one season. I don't mean a prophetic season. I mean one se from spring to summer. <laughs> that day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God claiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know what is holding him back. Scripturally, there's something holding back the Antichrist. For he can be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work. Everybody say lawlessness. lawlessness. How come no laws are being enforced? How come shoplifters are protected and store owners are prosecuted? It's a spirit of lawlessness. How come you're prosecuted for upholding the border and, and, and you're facilitated to, to do illegal things. How come you're allowed to beat somebody on a New York subway, but then if you put that guy in a chokehold to save that lady's life, the guy, the guy that saved the lady goes to jail, and the, the assailant is let free? Because it's a spirit of lawlessness that the Bible said is already at work in the world. Can you say amen? amen. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret, until the one that is holding it back steps out of the way. In the King James, everybody say the word restrainer. restrainer. Well, Finnis Dake, who was a great theologian, he said there's only three options as to what the restrainer is. Governments, the Holy Spirit, or the church. Could it be governments that will step out of the way? No, because there will still be government in the reign of the Antichrist. Is it the Holy Spirit? No, because the Holy Spirit will still be on the earth. There'll be 12,000 saved. There'll be 12,000 that become evangelists from every tribe of Israel, 144,000 evangelists. So the Holy Spirit will never leave the earth. He's omnipresent. But the church is not mentioned 
in Revelation. The church, uh, after chapter 3, the church is mentioned 19 times from Revelation 1 to Revelation 3. Then in Revelation 4, 1, I heard a voice saying, come up hither, come up hither, come up into the throne room of God. And I was taken up to heaven, and the church is never mentioned again. So the thing that's holding back the Antichrist, do you know why there's such a hatred for Christianity? Because the devil gets frustrated. Do you know, originally, we were never supposed to have a meeting like this again. You never thought there'd be... 400 people sitting in a meeting in, Calif in Southern California. We're unmasked, not six feet apart. We were never supposed to have gatherings like this again. But what happened? They would say it openly on CN CNBC, CNN, those Christians. They won't do what they're told. They, they buck all this stuff. Yeah, the plan, this was the Antichrist. They were trying to put everybody on universal basic income, shut down business, stay home, get a check. And you have to get something in you in order to participate in society, just like that says with the Antichrist system. But the Antichrist system can't overstep its bounds while the church is here. Because if the Antichrist was trying to rule right now, one 90-year-old woman from California that's filled with the Holy Spirit could get on an airplane, fly to where the Antichrist is, and cast the devil out of him and keep baking cookies. Because it's not the entire church that has authority over the Antichrist. The Bible says, greater is he who lives where? Me. Say it, where? Me. In me than all those that are in the world. Amen. The greater one lives in you. So I'm going to show you this before I lay hands on you to give you like a visual representation of a mentality I want you to carry from this night. Wherever your foot shall tread, you'll be on land that I've given to you. I had a friend who I led to the Lord and he relapsed on heroin back in Pittsburgh. I didn't hear from him for like three months. And then when I woke up one morning, I had a text message from him. <clears throat> I need your help. So I texted, where are you? And he told me. So I said, I have to do a broadcast in the morning. When I finish, I'll go over and see you. So he was in a, he relapsed on heroin. He was in a heroin flop house in Pittsburgh. So I went over, I was dressed like this and I was gonna change, but then I thought if the police raid the place, I wanna look like I don't belong there. <laughs> so I, I went over just like this. I walk into that house with such a, re say the greater one greater. lives in me. <laughs> so I'm not subject to those spirits. Those spirits are, now if you're here and you're 11, I'm not telling you to go to a drug house in uh, Compton or Long Beach. But I'm, I'm not 11. So I went over, and he was sitting on the couch shaking. Uh, what do they call that? Withdrawals. So I just went over and sat by him on the couch. And I had such a revelation from the Bible that there's, if those things are true, then if I sit in that place, the things that are in that house are going to start to bow to what's in me, not the other way around. So I just sat. And, you know, when people are coming off drugs, they talk a lot. Man, I messed up. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I, 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 this is so, I, I hurt so much. And he's talking. And I just sat and let him talk. And after about six or seven minutes, which doesn't sound like a long time, but it's a long time to hear somebody talk like that. He went, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm actually starting to feel better just you sitting here. Now see, just like that guy, why did that guy happen to open up to that lady in our church about how he feels so lost? See, people won't know why. You're not going to have somebody coming off a of heroin and go, I feel such a precious anointing on your life. <laughs> and in Southern California, they might even use the wrong words from the wrong religions. Like, I feel like a real aura. There's like a different light that's in you. It's like a, a chakra that you emit. But, but what they're sensing is the anointing. Can you say amen? amen? They just don't know how to phrase it. So he said, I feel different with you sitting here. I said, you're starting to feel better? He said, yeah. I said, well, let's pray. And I figured, well, if I'm going to pray for him, might as well pray for everybody. So I didn't have a microphone, obviously. I came to the center of that drug house. And I went like this. Everybody up from here now.
probably, probably seven of them. And I said, Jesus said, I feel, you know, no one's recording anything. It's not like anyone, when you talk to those people, you know, I don't really agree with that theology. So I just, I just spoke strong. I said, Jesus sent me here today to deliver every one of you. I said, if you'd like prayer, put your hand in the center, and God, God's going to save your life right now. All of them put their hands in. I grabbed their hands with both hands and said, pray this prayer after me. And I let them in the sinner's prayer. Then I laid hands on them, cursed addiction, and then I took Aaron with me. I said, hop in the car. And I said, uh, I'm going to get you in Teen Challenge. He said, before you go to rehab, you have to go to detox. I said, okay, I didn't know that. So I, I called the detox center in that county. And they said, um, what insurance do you have? He said, I don't have insurance. They said, sorry, we can't. And they didn't really sound sorry. They said, sorry, we can't take you. I said, do you take cash? Well, yeah, but it's a lot. Lots different to different people. You know, when you start filling up planes with gasoline that costs 23000 a tank, nothing really matters anymore. <laughs> How much is it? 5100 and it's due up front. I said, do you, do you take cash? Well, yeah. So, when they, are you one of those health and wealth preachers? I am. Because if all I had was the, if I didn't have either, then I just have to say, sorry you relapsed, all the best. If you have healing, you can get them healed. Then when they need to go to detox, you don't have to say, sorry, they don't have insurance. You say, no problem. So God will load you down with healing power and make your cup overflow with blessing that when the world's going to reject something, you can open the door back up with your money. Again, I see a great financial blessing coming on the people of California in Jesus' mighty name. You're going to be a force for righteousness in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, can you say amen? amen. Everybody say, the greater, one the greater one lives in me. So then I thought, if you can do that on that kind of scale, how did it end? See, I don't have any time. I don't have any use for people like this. I don't have any time for people like this. Christians, you know, there's a stronghold in L.A. Explain that to me. Explain to me what demon spirit is stronger than the Holy Ghost that lives in a Christian. I'd like to know. See, the stronghold is your block-headed brain. That's your stronghold. You know what one great preacher said? The only mountain any man ever has to move is, is, is the mountain of his own ignorance. As soon as you see in the Bible how defeated that Satan is. Not a little defeated. Majorly defeated. And how high and mighty Christ is. Seated in heavenly places. Far above. I'm not, I'm not teaching this as theology, but to illustrate my point, I'm going to tell you this story. I won't keep you here all night. I've got to go. I've got to do a funeral in Pittsburgh in the morning. I'm going to look like I just came out of a methadone clinic doing the funeral. <laughs> Who's this guy doing the funeral? Is he really a preacher? Hey, folks. <laughs> got a few things I want to share with you. Tonight. Where's the real preacher? I, gave, I preached on power over the devil on a Sunday morning. I was going to go, it was October 2022, and I was going to Montreal to preach, and their customs office closed at 3 p.m. So even though I didn't have to preach till 7, and it's a one-hour flight, I had to leave. I had to be in the plane with the door shut at 1.05 p.m. The, air, the airport's just down the road from our church. So I preached on power over the devil. I gave an invitation to receive Jesus Christ quickly. And I was thinking, I'll pray the sinner's prayer real quick. It's, it's about... 1251, and I have just enough time. I'll say amen, pass it off to Pastor Kofi, go out the side door, and go to the plane. And I call him forward after preaching on power of the devil, and one of the ladies that comes down throws herself on the ground and starts slithering like a snake, growling. And I thought, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I, today? <laughs> I mean, like, full-out demon-possessed. Like, if you don't believe in demons, you'd have believed in it. I was like, I think she might have a demon. No, she was like slithering like that. So without thinking, <laughs> this is not how you cast a demon out. But I wasn't thinking. All I was thinking was, I've got, uh, I've got like 11 minutes to be on the plane. I have to leave right now. So I went over to her, and I went like this.
they're like in that catatonic state, like in, in between. And I couldn't have her like snap back. In. So I, I picked her up. I'm like, hey, everything all right? Good. Here, look at me. Good. All right. Then I took, I took my cloth out, wiped the foam off her mouth. And I'm everything good? Good. All right. Pray the sinner's prayer with me. Pray the sinner's prayer. Good. Standing up. Good. Good. Here's Kofi. Good night, everybody. And I, out to the plane I went. You don't have to put up with the devil's mess. You don't have to drag them in a back room for four hours. You don't have to fast and pray for 30 days to do what God's already done. You can tell the devil, I got a flight to catch. Enough is enough. Enough. Every demon that's been sitting on your destiny, it vacates the premises tonight. Say the greater one lives in me. Well, if it can work in an individual, if it can work in a drug house, it can work in a city. Were you in Newark with me? We made a plan to have the biggest crusade we've ever had. When they play this video, this guy that prophesied over me in South Africa, he didn't even know who it was. I never met him. He said, when I was looking over the speakers list praying, the Lord gave me a word about one of the men that's on that list. He said, I don't even know if he's there tonight. And everybody pointed at me. So then he told me the exact word he gave me. That's exactly what I was praying for, that we would have our first crusade with 10,000 in attendance, and we would have the biggest altar call that we ever had in Newark, New Jersey. And so I went there, you'll see it, and you'll see the demonic opposition there was. But what do you do when there's demonic opposition? Keep going forward. Everybody say, go forward. Go forward. Never back up. I promise you, if the day comes in the future, where, where, like happened in R.W. Shambuck, just, just so you know, we've ordered this meeting to be shut down. The first person that steps up on that stage, we're going to arrest. I'll do just what Brother Shambuck did. Never back down. Call the devil's bluff. Make him arrest you. Make him put you in jail. Make him do everything they're threatening to do. 95% of the time they won't. The 5% that they do, God, the Bible says, blessed are you when you... When Brother Shambuck got arrested in Chicago in the 1960s, he went to jail, and he started praying, Lord, what do I do? The Lord said, send one of your assistants to go to a costume shop and buy a Roman Catholic priest outfit and wear it to the trial. So he, wore it, he did it. Wore it to the trial the next day. They said, we rescinded his, his tent permit, and he held the meeting without a permit. And so we have it on video and everything, Your Honor. And when they got all done, before the defense attorney could even say anything, the Irish Catholic judge said, all that may be well and true. But it'll be a cold day in hell when I put a father in jail. You're free to go, Father. And Brother, Brother Shambach stood up and went like this. Bless you, my son. And he went to the meeting. Now, everybody said, keep moving forward. Did he leave Chicago? No. He was supposed to preach for one week. He stayed six weeks and built a church. In the name of Jesus, every place the devil's tried to run you out of, you're going to run him out of there, and God's going to give you a permanent encampment as a sign that the devil doesn't push believers around, but believers are anointed to push the devil around in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say the greater one lives in me. So all you're going to see on this video is a boy that was born with a speech impediment, me, that decided to get full of the Holy Ghost, go into a city that's full of crime, top 10 crime in the country at the time, uh, Muslim city council, everything is supposed to be against you. Oh, there's a real principality that's here. Yeah, and now there's a new, you know, the, you know what I've been telling those kind of Christians? There's a real principality over Los Angeles. Is it? Do you know about it? Oh, yeah. Okay, then go tell it. This would be a good week to use its vacation days. Otherwise, it's going to get thrown out of here with violence because I'm not asking the devil for permission. The devil is not over my head. The devil is under my feet. I want to tell you, at the end of this meeting tonight, the devil, though he parades like he's over your head, you've been reminded by the Word of God tonight, he's under your feet, and he's going to stay under your feet. Roll it. On the field, miracles will begin to pop like popcorn without you even will begin praying to pop for like the popcorn sick. Popcorn without you even praying for the sick. That's what Dr. Rodney told me one week before the meeting started. 
devils will come out of people. Devils will come Possibly out of people. This is important to know how God, it would say all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You know, I'm not going to ask a student, how many of you love God? Obviously, you're in, church, you're in a Pentecostal meeting at 5 after 10 at night on a Friday. When some of you, a couple years back, were just getting out of the shower at this time to go have a good time on Friday night. But those days are over. The devil's reign is over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if I was a demon, I'd be nervous. He's, they're in for a bad year in California. The Lord's going to flip everything in this state. I see New York flipping. I see California flipping. Revival, tearing it down regionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you want to know how, the, you're going to see how many people came to this meeting. And the reason it did, it started off, there's a lady who's a hip-hop artist from the 90s that has her own uh, station on Sirius XM. When she saw the advertisement that we were going to give away bill pays, help people with food, oh, this is a scam. She's from Newark. She said, they're not going to scam my people. She called the number and said, who's running this? I'm going to turn you into the police. So Tony Archuleta, who was our crusade director at the time, he said, no, I understand how you would see this and think it's a scam, but it's not, and gave her our YouTube link. We've done this in like uh, eight other cities. So she said, all right, I'm going to watch. If you people are lying, you're in trouble. Well, she watched and was so touched by what we did. Well, who pays you? How do you make any money for this? They said, we're ministers. We do this to reach the lost. She's a, she's a black Muslim. But she was so moved that we go into the inner city to do that. She said, all right, I'm going to promote this on Sirius XM every day. So she got on her hip-hop station and started telling all my people in Newark, there's a big event you need to go to. And she asked if she could open it for us, like be the MC. So the thing, uh, it's amazing who God will use to help you. Can you say amen? amen? And so she used her platform to get a ton of people out there. Then I go to the meeting one night. They have a bunch of highway signs. This is the last night of this meeting. See, it's not my first rodeo. Plus, I know other crusade evangelists. I know they did the same thing to Shamba. There were too many people getting saved. Aldermen and councilmen aren't getting kickbacks on drug sales that week because nobody's buying drugs. So we're going to shut this guy down. But you can't shut down the Holy Ghost. You just keep moving forward. Can you say amen? Go ahead, roll it. This is what you're going to be doing. I said this is what you're going to be doing. In every city you go to from this point on, I am going to give you uncommon, unusual favor with the leaders in the church, even those in the Pause world. It. That's why I have to bring Tony and Clarita and these guys with me, because otherwise if you leave it to the church, they play music that's the waiting room music for a spa in Torrance. Amen. Continue. They will say, yes, we want this young man, and you will rise up. And you will not only talk about a thousand What's here, three thousand there, which is great, says the Lord. But you shall talk about ten thousand here, and a hundred thousand there, and a million here, and a million there. Festival of Life in New York was Pause it. like any. That's interesting. Listen to that again, because we hit the ten thousand, and then that's probably where the Bishop Dag thing comes. Right? <laughs> Praise God. You like this technology we have for the production where we have like 1990s Panasonic picture in picture? Sharp, right? I got a million dollar ministry and like a hundred dollar TV ministry. Go ahead. Festival of Life in Newark was unlike any other crusade in Revival Today history. Leading up to opening night, there was an excitement that spread throughout the entire city giving us 20,000 pre-registrations. Lines began forming hours before it began. Pause it. Wrapping around the... Don't see Newark, see L.A. If it can happen there, it can happen here. Mass evangelism. How many know we'll reach them one by one? No, you won't. You need to learn math. There's 3.2 million people just in the city of L.A. You ain't going to reach them one by one. Go take them by the tens of thousands. God's anointing people to take them by the thousands and the tens of thousands tonight in Jesus' name. 
I said God's anointing people to take them by the thousands and the tens of thousands in Jesus' name. Continue. I won't keep Park on all sides. We knew that we were about to witness the greatest night of Festival of Life to date. God sent his only begotten son. He laid down his life for me. He laid down his life for you before you were ever born. God knew you. God had a plan for your life. We got some big speakers, a good microphone, and we took it outside to tell every crack addict, every heroin dealer, every blood, crip, and Latin king, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, you're only one prayer away from the power of God coming down. He'll pick you up out of a pit and he'll place your feet on the rock this day. 9,000 people packed out opening night the police on site made comment that it was the biggest crowd they had ever seen in Lincoln Park. The gospel message was preached and we saw an upwards of 1,700 souls saved on night one. An altar response so large that there was no room for the massive crowd that flooded forward. To tell people to quit coming because the they're getting crushed. Go ahead. You don't, don't the was certainly set for the week ahead and we were determined only to see victory upon victory. The Islamic City government of Newark, however, had different plans, making every effort to shut us down completely. On night three, the city placed a sign in the park announcing that it was the conclusion of Festival of Life. They thought they had brought the crusade to an end, but to their defeat, Evangelist Jonathan certainly had something to say in response. I see they put signs out there. This is the final night of Festival of Life. Es festival of Life. I have one question to ask. Yo tengo una pregunta. Who do you think you are? ¿Quién tú crees que eres? You didn't call me into the ministry. Tú no me al God called me into the ministry. Dios me llamó al and when God sends you, no devil can send you back. Y cuando Dios te envía, ningún día if you think I'm some spineless punk preacher, you got the wrong gun. Si tú crees que yo soy un predicador bobo, tienes la última I came to get this message to the people. Yo vine a traer este mensaje a la gente. And no devil in hell is going to stop it. Word spread fast that Festival of Life would be meeting indoors. And once again, the people of Newark lined up early with anticipation, wrapping around the building. I feel the Holy Ghost. Siento el Espíritu Santo. I feel the Holy Ghost. Siento el Espíritu Santo. Your best days are not behind you. En los mejores días no están detrás de ti. Your best days are yet to come. Los mejores días todavía vienen de camino. Who does the devil think he is? Qué quiere que el diablo es? He doesn't have permission to take out my people. Él no tiene permiso para hacer con mi gente. I stand tonight. Yo me paro esta noche. In my office as a man of God. En mi oficina como hombre de Dios. Enough is enough. Ya es suficiente. No more over. No más sobredosis. No más death. No más muerte. Let revival sweep this land. Que este lugar. In Jesus' mighty name. En el nombre de Jesús. If you're with me, take 30 good seconds. Si estás conmigo, tome Put those fingers and hands together. together. Aplaude. Announce the defeat to the devil. Ya es suficiente. Your hand clap is announcing that his reign of terror is over. Pause it. I never went to pray for anybody. I went to leave and they blocked me and wanted prayer. So I did the first few people. Then every person got in line. This isn't going to happen once or twice in Southern California. This is going to be a routine, one revival, one crusade after another. You know, we were going to name this the Los Angeles Crusade. And then I got to check in my spirit that this, I'm talking this meeting, wasn't a crusade. This is going to be a gathering of future champions. They were going to, God was going to magnetize people into the meeting and then put fire on them, and then you're going to run out and do great things. Can you say amen? amen. Continue. The people of Newark were so hungry for God. Men, women, and children crowded into the aisles at Symphony Hall while evangelist Jonathan laid hands on every single person, young and old, who desired prayer. Many were touched and healed by the power of God. Pops. Now, I just want to say, remember when you stand up to preach that there's people like that that are, are addicted to drugs and have AIDS and stuff, and they, can, they don't need a sermon on time management or how to be kind in the trials of life. They need miracles. There needs to be power to set the captive free. So remember people like her.
Continue. Skin and bone. Ended up with a condition or, or a disease that it's an inherited disease and it's called sarcoidosis. What it does is it kills all your tissues. I woke up one day, I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk, I couldn't feel the earth under my feet. When he was ministering, it, it kind of like resonated with me. Really what happened was when I got here, when I got here, I put the wheelchair, I told somebody else to sit in the wheelchair and I just, and I just got up. That was just it. I just got up, I got in the front, and, and I just enjoyed myself, and, you know, um, I, I don't hurt, and, that, and that's strange to me. That's strange. I don't hurt. Um, I think I'm doing pretty good. I think I'm doing pretty good. He prayed for me last night, and my legs was hurting. That went away. He knew that I had a um, messed up dicks in my back. And I had this cane when I came in here, walking with this cane. And you see where I had this cane at, right? Pause it. People in New Jersey, they tell, even their testimonies are like, like want to fight aggressive. See where this cane is, right? Want to say something about it? Continue. Now that, when they kicked me out of the park, the police came up to me and said, well, just so you know, this is coming from the mayor. We love what you're doing. Please bless us. Wow. Like, don't, I don't want anything bad to happen to me from messing this thing up. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking. They're all on-duty police officers, and I, I forgot. So I said, all of you lift your hands. <laughs> so halfway through the prayer, it dawns on me. I have 17 Newark police officers like this. <laughs> and then I'm pointing at them. And I can't, I'll never forget this as long as I live. This guy walked by with a backwards Yankees hat. It went like this. <laughs> you got this skinny kid <laughs> sticking up 17 police officers. And then when I finished praying, two of the women said, can we also have prayer for a special prayer? They said, neither of us are able to have children. Will you pray that God opens our wombs? From being there for three nights and watching the miracles. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know what I had? One guy told me one time, he said, the way you talk, 
you'd think preaching solved all the problems of the country. So since I was making it sound like it, let me say it directly. The preaching of the word of God will solve every problem that's in this nation. And that word is nigh thee, even in your mouth. Can you say amen? amen. Go ahead, roll it. No death, no injury. No amount of Islamic City government opposition could even come close to stopping the power of God. Grocery boxes were given to those in need, and 500 backpacks were given to school-aged children. And for the first time in Revival Today history, Festival of Life was broadcast live on television on both Faith USA and CTN, a potential reach of 70 million homes. The total attendance for the week came to 18,129 people, and 2,573 souls were saved in addition to the countless salvations from those watching on TV and online. The people of Newark will never be the same, and neither will we. Now change America to California and say that. Say it one more time. Now lift both hands to the Lord and say, Thank you, Lord, for using me to be a part of it. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me exactly what my part is to play. Thank you that I won't miss it by one step to the left or to the right. I will be a part of this last day move of God. Now with your hands lifted, just begin to thank him. Thank him in your seat. If you're standing up, thank him standing up. Let's take 60 seconds. Let's thank him out of our mouths. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now you do your own praying. I'm going to pray for me. Thank you, Lord. These last eight months of this year, I pray. I thank you for strength to run. I thank you for a magnetization to the meetings. I thank you for filling every place we preach. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for full altars. Thank you for many, many miracles. Thank you for doing such mighty things that it won't be able to be ignored. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for revival. Thank you for the city of angels. Thank you for San Diego. Thank you for a city that's named after a preacher. One that's named for, preacher, for a preacher, another one's named after angels. How can this place go down? Hallelujah. Bondore katastede. Indiono mondia. Boshkondiana mandie. Rostondia. If you're filled with the Spirit, begin to pray in the Spirit. Come on, on this final night, lift it up. Build up your inner man. I bless Los Angeles in Jesus' name. I bless the people of Los Angeles, people of Orange County, people of Los Angeles County, San Diego, all the little cities and towns in between, Bondo Rome, Marina del Rey, Venice Beach, Proscoto, Regandianama, Tustondo, Rebandie, Icandianamondie, Bostondianamo. May many signs and wonders be done in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, Jesus said that the sign in Revelation 3 and in Matthew 25, as he waited his coming, that people would become lukewarm and indifferent. And maybe that's you. Maybe you allowed your life to drift away from God. The first thing you have to do if you're going to be used by God is you have to live for the Lord. 
God can't use unclean, unholy vessels. You have to give yourself wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, wholly to the Lord. Everything I am belongs to you, O Lord. Everything I'm not, I thank you that it's perfected by your strength in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Use me, O Lord. Touch me, O Lord. Put the, your coal of fire on my lips. May I never be the same. May the things of this earth grow dim. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for the family that I first brought me to California, the Castillo family and everybody that's, that's with you. Just come around and let me lay hands on you first. You're a precious family to me and a precious family to God. All of you, all of you in that row that came together, come around. Just these Castillos. There might be like 20 other Castillos. But. Let me get that. What did I do with that? Go. Just stay right there. I'm coming back to you. I'm just putting gum in. That way if you fall down, I'm sure it's the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands to the Lord. With all the hard things you've been through, you never allowed your mouth to say a negative word about God. And you never turned your back on God. God's going to reward you for that. In Jesus' name. When I lay my hands on you, I loose God's power into your spirit. To live for the Lord all the days of your life. You won't be one of the young people in California that fall by the wayside. You'll live a long, good life full of the blessing of God. In Jesus' name. Command a turnaround, a breakthrough and a turnaround. In Jesus' name. Breakthrough and turnaround. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. That's it. I lose that power right through you. In Jesus' name. That's it. Be blessed. Every struggle you've been going through, I command it to lift now, in Jesus' name. That's it. More. It's like a shower from heaven washing over you. In Jesus' name. Just stay there and let the Lord touch you. Be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. If you need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, your fire's gone out. You're lukewarm, indifferent. You've allowed things into your life the Bible calls sin. I'm sure you could find plenty of preachers in Southern California. You could find them on the East Coast too. They'll tell you, don't worry about it. We all sin. We've all sinned today. We'll all sin tomorrow. That kind of talk will ensure that you end up in hell. You have to live holy. God's a holy God. You have to be born again, and then you have to continue in holiness. Anybody tells you anything the opposite, you should listen to me instead. I don't know what year it was that preachers started to think it was their job to relax people into hell. I know we all sin. I know we all make mistakes. That's a that'll that'll kill you. You don't get on the road to drive a car and go, I'm going to make mistakes today on my... No, you need you careful changing lanes, attentive. I mean, no, no matter how many times we make mistakes, we can always recover. No, there's fatal car accidents. There's people that there's... You listen to this. There's people that are, that are not in a meeting like this right now on a Friday night, whether you know this or not. In California, not everybody's in a meeting like this right now on Friday night. Some people are going to go out in their 20s and 30s and 40s to go have one more night of fun and sin, and they're not going to wake up tomorrow morning. And they're, and they're going to go to hell. To have a light regard about your eternity is the dumbest thing that a person can do. The Bible says to be focused, always ready. Looking, when you see all these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption is nigh. Jesus is coming soon. And that's why I'm not giving this call to condemn people. If I, if I didn't care about you going to hell, I'd just shut up about it and go take the offering. But if you're here and you came to this meeting tonight, you don't know Jesus Christ, then you need to know. I have a friend that's here, Sarah. She's in the back. 
During the lockdown, she found our news program. She was not a Christian, but she didn't like all the rules they were putting in it and didn't like it. So she found me there, came to see me preach at Pastor James Church in India. And then she messaged me at the end of the meeting. Um, I was hoping to get to meet you, but I didn't see you before you left. I didn't know she was there. I didn't know who she was. I'd, only, I'd seen her on YouTube on the comments. I said, oh, you're here? And the Lord spoke to me. If she doesn't come back, she's going to go to hell. She came to church once. She's out of here. So I said, please turn your car around and come meet me and my wife in the back room. And we met and talked and prayed. And she made every decision she had to make to live for the Lord. Tough decisions. And then four years later, she's a volunteer in this crusade. With, she flew out to Pittsburgh to get baptized. See, there's people like that. You matter. You're not a bad person, but you've never made a sure decision. As for me and my house, not we're going to try to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But I want to call to you to do that tonight. Let me fly home to Pittsburgh asleep with a big smile on my face with people that came to the altar that were on their way to hell. And now not only are they on their way to heaven, they're going to mess the devil up the rest of their days. If you're here and you say, Jonathan, I've never given my life to Jesus Christ, or I once did, but I got lulled to sleep. I fell back into old ways. But tonight, I'm coming to Jesus Christ. I want you to quickly put your hand up high and wave it at me. We're going we're to pray right now. Awesome. Who else? Keep your hand up. I see you. Who else? Yes. Who else? Who else? Today's my day. I'm going to lay my head on my pillow tonight and know that I have peace with God, that my sins are all forgiven. Very quickly, everyone that lifted a hand, slip out of your seat and join me right at the front. We're going to pray together. Come right now. Go ahead, Sister Clarita. Come right now. Come right to the center. Every hand that was lifted, everybody that meant business with God, come. I'm going to pray for you. I, I will pray for you. I promise. I'm going to pray for you. Come on. Sing it. Give myself to you. Who else before we pray? I know there are more hands. Come. This is my night. You didn't lift, lift a hand, but you know you need to be here. Come. This is my night. Yes. Awesome. 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 Tonight's my night. I give my life to Jesus tonight. Praise God. Anybody else? Though? Yes, come. God bless you. Come. Anybody else before we pray? Very quickly, everybody at the front with both hands to the Lord. This is awesome. This is a very simple but very powerful prayer. As you pray it, God's going to do a work down on the inside of you. He'll take out your old heart and he'll give you a new heart. Say this nice and loud. Heavenly Father, I've come forward tonight to give you my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in your blood. I believe in my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and my Savior. Right now, I receive forgiveness. By the blood of Jesus, I am saved. I am forgiven. I am clean. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Every past hurt, every injury of the enemy from before tonight, that he used to keep you in, a, in an invisible prison. Mess your insides up. I lose the power of God to set you free from those things. In Jesus' name, every addiction, every sickness, every disease. You know, when you get saved, you can't see that you're saved. So the Bible says that Jesus told the man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. I, the Son of Man, will heal him to show that I also have power to forgive sin. So every sickness you have, God heals it to show that the insides are clean too. In Jesus' name, every addiction, every tormenting spirit, every sickness and disease, it goes from your body now. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Come here, young man. What's your first name? Here, watch your step. Come right up with me. I see the hand of God on you. Just stand and face me. Lift both your hands. Close both eyes. Thank you for the anointing, Lord. Just like you touched me when I was a young man. I thank you for putting it on him right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Never the same from tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Where's the cancer at? Put your hand right there. Lift the other hand to the Lord. Underneath that hand passes the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. Every cell of this cancer, I adjure you in Christ's name, come out. Out. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Brand new blood, everything that was damaged by the cancer and the treatment, be whole. In Jesus' name. Lift both your hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, that's why I'm praying. Say this, I receive healing, Lord, from your hand. I take it now. Thank you, Lord, for a sound mind. In Jesus' name. That's it. You're going to have the best year you've ever had. In Jesus' name. Amen? The best year that you've ever had. Clean mind, pure thoughts, no trouble. And all that harassment's going to leave you permanently from tonight. You believe that with me? You believe that with me? Be blessed. In Jesus' name, be free. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's the Lord. Now lift your hands and just begin to thank Him. Say this, thank you, Jesus, for touching my mind. Here, let the Lord touch you. In Jesus' name. And then as you thank him, your faith reaches out and grabs it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Now, I want to welcome all of you, but I especially want to welcome everybody that came from this big family, because I've met most of your family, and you're a great family. God has his hand on your life. Everybody lift your hands one more time at at this front. I loose the blessing of God on every family that's represented here, particularly, let me see your hand, my friend. Everybody connected to you by blood. I loose the blessing of God beginning with you. Be healed. Be set free. Every trouble you've had in this family, that trouble goes now. In Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. In Jesus' name. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing. Thank you for turning everything around. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. Go right through you. In Jesus' name. Welcome to the family of God. They're fine. Your sins are all forgiven. And God wrote your name in a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. If you trust me before you go back to your seat, see these nice people that are helping us over here? Some of them you already know. I want you to to go see them. They have books that they're going to give you from me. Uh, A Bible and other books to help you live the Christian life. So before you go back to your seat, see them because I want to give you something. And it's quicker that way. Then I'm going to pray for everybody. But I won't start praying so you get your books. Be healed. In Jesus' name. That's it. Done. Say it again. This will be the greatest year. This will be the greatest year. Lift your other hand. From your mouth to God's ears. This will be the greatest year you've ever had. Every obstacle bows low before God. In Jesus. Now that you belong to God, you can expect a difference. In Jesus' name. I love you. What nation are y'all from again? Fiji? You know, the first person I ever met from Fiji, I think that's your daughter or sister or whoever over there. And now I've met all of you. So I'm, I'm going to pray for Fiji on my flight home. That God touches all people from Fiji and the nation of Fiji. Let's believe that together because I love you. Please head that way and then we're going to pray for you. Head over that way in Jesus' name. Go ahead. You can head that way. 
Give them a big hand clap as they head that way. God bless you. Nice meeting your whole family. Head that way. I'm going to pray for everybody. As soon as you get your books on the line, everybody has to pray for them. Thank you. Can you say amen? amen. Feels like Newark all over again. You can't, can't even move on with the service because everybody wants prayer. I'm going to pray for everybody tonight. And I thank you for staying, but I promise you nobody has a longer ride home tonight than me. And nobody will be up earlier than me because I, I uh, uh, I'll be speaking again at 1 o'clock uh, East Coast time. So, and I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, I'm not running out of here. I flew, I flew here to bless the people from Cal of California. I'm going to bless you in Jesus' name. No one's leaving anyway. We're going to take the final offering of this week. Love you. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you sh shortly. You have an offering envelope on your seat. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give. No one has to give. I don't have a chart with your faces, and I check off who gave and who didn't give. But believe it or not, there's people that come to give. And I promise you, what you saw the Lord have me role model this week when we took that first offering for Pastor Dean Shropshire and then we were given a church before the end of the week. Say something out loud. What I make happen for others, God makes happen for me. You want to know where that is in the Bible? Ephesians 6, 8. Knowing this, whatsoever good any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. That means what you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. Pastor Dean didn't bless me back. God blessed me back. So there are things you could be saving up for that if you'll put what you've saved to the work of the Lord, God will just give you the whole thing. That's our secret to never having to have a mortgage or down payment or anything for building or property. What you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. If you watch our church service on Sunday, I'm going to share an even bigger testimony, most likely, that I didn't get to tonight and didn't feel to give. But that church was only one of the two buildings that we were given today. Wow. All right. Well, if you want to hear it, you want to hear it? That's why I said today's not going to be a day I forget. And then we had, what, probably double the people tonight of any other night. It's, it's like th things broke tonight. In the spirit. Passover's next week. There's going to be a breaking during Passover. Don't receive the offering quite yet. So I was given, we were given that church in Lake Worth, Texas, right next to Fort Worth. And then my wife called me. She's flying to Texas to preach. A man called her and said, I might have the number wrong, but it's something like 32 homes. He's a home builder. He built 32 very nice homes in Pittsburgh. 31 of them sold like this. And then he had one that he couldn't sell. So there's another pastor he knows that was believing with him to help him sell the house. He said, I was watching Andrew Womack, and the Lord spoke to me. The reason you can't sell that house is it, it belongs to Pastor Jonathan and the Dallas. And that, which, if you, if you don't follow our ministry, I, I don't have a home. I rent, I rent, I have to be the only person on planet Earth that has a private jet and an apartment. Because I never think I just, I just didn't care. So he, he heard that. And then the pastor that was helping him pray to help sell the house, who I, we barely know each other. He said, listen, I don't want to overstep my bounds, but I was thinking when I was praying today, perhaps the reason that house doesn't sell, he said, I, I feel like you're supposed to give it to Jonathan and Adalis. So he called Adalis. That house, it, I looked it up. $846,000, which over here is no big, that's like a garage. <laughs> but in Pittsburgh, it's a big deal. And then secondly, it's in a town, I won't say where, because I don't need anybody uh, showing up on meth to stab me. It didn't like one of my YouTube videos. It's in the same town, Camila's in fifth grade. 
In sixth grade, she goes to a different middle school. It's in the town that that middle school's in, which right now our home is about an hour from that school. So then third, what's the third thing? Oh, yeah. So I called to say thank you because I thought that you probably should say thank you. And he said, I said, uh, man, that's almost a million. I said, I don't take that for granted. Thank you. I said, that's almost a million dollar seat. He said, it's not going to be almost a million dollar seat. He said, the house value is at $846,000. I'm going to have a, you guys pick out all the furniture you want and then have Adalis pick out whatever car she wants for her to make it an even million dollars. Church, house, that all happened in four hours. All right, I'm glad I shared. So, Well, thanks. I'm not. I, thanks for Karen. I wasn't going to tell anybody because not everyone's always had. Well, Adonis told me she was going to the airport. She was in the airport to fly to Texas to preach when the man called her and told her. And she got lightheaded and had to sit down. Hey! All right, stay on your feet. Let's just make this the offer. Psalm 126. Everybody say, what I make happen for others. God will make happen for me. Tell you what, I don't know what the offering would have been Monday night, but I bet you it wouldn't have been enough to buy that house. So when the Lord speaks to you about a seed, he has a harvest in mind. Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. Then we were filled with laughter, and our tongues were singing. And the other nation said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. For those who plant in tears will reap with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with their harvest. They doubtless come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Those that, say with me, those that plant in tears. We'll reap with shouts of joy. So tearful seed produces joyful harvest. And so that's all an offering is, is an opportunity to give that kind of seed to the Lord in expectation that he's going to do great and mighty things. Man, I, you know, I, gotta be, I almost never tell a testimony, and I was even debating whether to ever tell it. The only reason I was going to tell it was because eventually they'll run a feature that I have a million-dollar home as if it came like I took it out of the offering, which people will believe that anyway, but at least the people that care would know how it came. But uh, I never thought there'd be a room full of people that actually cared about God doing You know, e even when that happened, I think I only texted three or four people. There's hardly anybody you can tell stuff like that to. Even people you know, because they get weird. But to have a room full of people in California that actually care about me and my wife from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Amen. I almost wish we could just move the dial to July and just pick up where we left off. But this will give you a little breather to do your laundry and, and stuff. How many know we're going to come back in July and hit it even harder? Amen. Holy Ghost service. Redlands, I can't wait. I love you. I love you. I love all every minister that's here. I love you. Thank you for coming and bringing your people. If I could ask you to do something. If you would give tonight and only give if you're going to put an expectation on your seed. What are you believing God to do for you?
Father, I'm going to put this in your hand as seed, believing for you to multiply it back in Jesus' name. And then just ask God what that seed would be. Nobody has to give to get prayer. Nobody has, nobody has to do anything. I'm not holding the 357, but there are people who'd like to give. You're believing for a church building? There's an anointing for that right now. Did I only say this on the phone to someone, or did I ever say it publicly? I told people that I could feel like something's going against money in the spirit, and I started teaching on it and coming against it. And I feel it breaking now. Even the Iran-Israel attack leading right up to Passover, there's something jerking around in the spirit, but it's going to break. It broke this today for me, and it's going to break. This Passover is going to be a supernatural week for everybody in this room. Everything you've been waiting on, every answered prayer, it breaks this Passover in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that with me, can you say amen? amen. All right. Be seated briefly. Your offering envelope's there. If you're filling it out, it's uh, on your envelope. If you're watching online, revivaltoday.com, and you click give now. So I'll tell you a second, another awesome thing. Because there's that funeral, which I'm not happy about, I love my uncle. My mom and dad and sister are flying in for the funeral. So after, after we go pick up the key and the deed, and my whole family, my sister lives in Montreal, my parents live in Maine, and they're all going to be there, and we go pick it up tomorrow at 7 p.m. I told that guy, I said, it's going to make your head spin how fast I, I move into that house. I'm going to move in there faster than Venezuelan squatters in New York City. Amen. I was 50-50 on how that joke would go over, but apparently you people laugh at anything. Praise God. I'm blown away. I don't even know what to say. Looking forward to seeing the jet with the logo on it in about an hour. I want to say this before I pray for you after the offering. I'm splitting right after the service because I, I don't mean I, I'm tired or I need, I have to leave. Now, I said this last time, and I stopped to talk to three people, and before I knew it, I barely made church Sunday in Pittsburgh. Because I stayed, I stayed, I talked to people until about 12.30 and then went to the airport. So don't think I'm leaving because I'm some big f famous TV preacher, though I am. <laughs> I'm, I have to go. I, 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 I was like in my head I was going to be done at 10 o'clock and we can see how that went. Pastor Abraham, where's the cheesesteak from Fat Sal's? It's in the car. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Is there a milkshake? You have the milkshake? No milkshake. No, I, he, he offered a milkshake, but my 6,000 calorie nights are coming to an end <laughs> because I have a goal to live. I would like to enjoy that house for a couple years, <laughs> so I'm going to put the milkshakes away. I, I did stay every night till there was no one left to talk to up until tonight, which is no big... I, I, I enjoyed, which I, I did because I like doing that. But... Uh, I, I'm not rushing out because I'm too big to talk to you. I, I have to go home. I'm sure you'll live. You'll find a way to overcome that devastating news. <laughs> Thanks for coming this week. I love you. I love you, Cousin Phil. That's my cousin on my mom's side. The pastor's here in, I could get it, but give it to me. Marietta, Marietta Passion Life Church. His son, his great wife. All of you that are here. Really? I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate you saying, he said, thanks for what you're doing in California. I hope I never give off any kind of vibe like you people don't know what you're doing and I need to come from the East Coast and rescue California. I have no feeling like that. I just want to help, I just want to help give you a little encouragement. You're going to have a great year. Your churches are going to have a great year. Your businesses are going to explode in Jesus' name. Amen. Revivaltoday.com, you click Give Now. If, and uh, that's it. Revival Today, P.O. Box 7, Prosperity, Pennsylvania, 15329. If you're given by mail. Come forward to receive the offering. Hold your seat up before the Lord. Are we to be out of here at 11 o'clock, Rachel? 
But what time do we have this still legally? 11? Okay, I'll lay hands on people quick. I'm trying to think of what kind of pace I need to do. Um, Redlands, California, May. Modesto, California, May. If you're watching online, Washington State next week. Good Lord. It's a lot of moving. Thank God for milkshakes. Amen. <laughs> Holy Ghost and milkshakes. Dangerous combination. Hold your seat up before the Lord. Father, I thank you for a hundredfold return on every seed that's sown. The same way you dizzied my wife with blessings today. I pray you would dizzy people with blessings. That's what Psalm 126 says. They were like those that dream. That they got hit with blessings so much they were like in a catatonic state. Their mouths were open. Saying, surely the Lord has done great things. What joy. I pray by the time we come back in July, people would have staggering testimonies of the goodness of God. In Jesus' name. All God's people said? Amen. Go ahead and quickly receive the offering. We'll line everybody up and pray. And we'll GTO. I, I, I feel, I see a fresh wind. song there's not three different holy spirits there's not one that heals one that delivers and one that fills you with fire to do the work of god it's the same spirit so when i lay hands on you and yell and say fire that fire destroys cancer destroys disease it lights you ablaze for the work of the lord it frees you from addiction can you say amen so that's what i want to do and god's going to do something on the inside of you I'm telling you, there's people that when they lay hands on you, on you, they're, you're different. I was uh, this summer, and then things come out of it. That's what I was having a chat with that young lady at the altar. She said, I don't feel better. I said, we just prayed 90 seconds ago. Give it a little bit. It looses something on the inside of you. And then uh, you'll see the effects of it. Can you say amen? Praise God. Thanks for being here every night. God bless you. Pastor Michael, who I'm going to be with in, in one week, uh, sorry, one month, he's going to give you uh, instructions on how to line up. And we're going to pray. So I know it's late, but shut yourself in with God. And let's end this thing with a double red exclamation point. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Here's what we'll do tonight. This left section to my left. Yeah, that's left. Right over here. If you'll follow the usher that's close to the door here, we're going to take this entire section out this side door. We're going to line you up in the hallway over here. So if you would just exit your row right now, follow the ushers through that door this way. This center section, the doors that are open behind you, we're going to line you up in that hallway. So if you would ex exit your section here, turn around, head through into that hallway. This section to my right over here, we are going to line you up in a square all the way around the uh, auditorium here as far as we can get you. So I'm going to have you step out of your row here, if you would, please, and begin to line up across the front and make your way around the chairs. Follow the directions of the ushers. You're going to face the chairs this time. Ushers, if you'll help the people line up around the building, please. Ushers, if you can hear me, please make sure no one is standing behind anybody else. Line them up shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. If you're standing behind somebody, make your way to the end of the line, please. Every hand lifted to the Lord. Every hand lifted to the Lord. I bless you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, as I lay my hands on these wonderful California people, thank you for healing from every disease. Thank you for freedom from every addiction. Thank you for fresh fire to run in the battles of the Lord. In Jesus' name, lift your hands. Say this out loud. Father, tonight I receive the fire of the Holy Ghost, never to be the same. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're filled with the Spirit, begin to pray in the Spirit. Go ahead and sing, Sister Clarita. In Jesus, that's it. In Jesus, that's it. From the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I see your grace.
a mighty revival. It's a mighty revival. It's a mighty revival. It's a mighty revival. Mighty fresh wind. It's a mighty fresh wind. It's a mighty fresh fire. Mighty fresh fire. It's a mighty fresh fire. It's a mighty revival. 